Premiership from BBC Radio Scotland. Good afternoon, hello to you if you're tuned in to BBC Radio Scotland FM and in sounds with Celtic Park. Liam McLeod, Stephen McGinn and Paddy Bonner here with you for the next couple of hours as the Celtic players walk through the guard of honour formed by their opponents today, St Mirren. A mark of respect for Celtic's third title in succession. You'll get the trophy a little bit later on. Business of the final league match to take place first, though. And the two sets of players exchanging handshakes down there. It's a magnificent day weather-wise in Glasgow. Bright blue skies, the sun splitting the sky and beaming down on that wonderful playing surface here in Glasgow's East End. Well, Celtic ensure there'd be no final day nerves by doing what they had to do on Wednesday evening. They brushed Kilmarnock aside 5 nothing with one of their performances of the season. They really were at it from the very start. And that resounding success ensured they had an insurmountable lead at the top of the table ahead of the final day. So it doesn't matter what happens anywhere else. They will get their hands on the silverware a little later. And Brendan Rodgers, with one eye on the cup final, a week today has made six changes to his side. Johnston, Carter Vickers, Scales, Forrest, Maida, Ida all drop out. Ralston, Welsh, Navrotsky, Kuhn, Palma, Kyogo come in. So Hart and goal, Ralston, Welsh, Navrotsky, Taylor, O'Reilly, McGregor, Hitate, Kuhn and Palma, either side of Kyogo. The Celtic bench is Bain, Johnston, Scales, Ida, Carter, Vickers, Iwata, Bernardo, Maida and Forrest. For St Mirren, who are celebrating in the week as well, a first European birth since 1987 and a highest league finish since 1984-85. It's been a terrific campaign for Stephen Robinson and for his players and they've managed to build on last season's top six finish and they will have continental football to look forward to. Four changes, Bolton, Brown, Mandarin and Scott are out. Fraser, Pomono, Boyd, Munson, Olisanya come in. Hemming in goal, Fraser, Gogic, Taylor, Pomono and Tans are wide. Bakus, O'Hara, Boyd, Munson in the middle with McMenamin supporting Olisanya. The Saints bench are Minsky to sub goalie. Bolton, Flynn, Mandarin, Scott, Dunn, Brown, Strain, Jameson. The refs, Matt McDermott, the VAR for this one is Kevin Clancy and St Mirren are going to kick off they were here last month put in an excellent first half performance before eventually succumbing 3-0 in the second half Celtic were much better in the second 45 of that one there was much to be positive about for Stephen Robinson with that opening 45 that day and St Mirren in their change colours red shirts, black shorts red socks with the black tops against the green and white hoops of Celtic St Mirren right to left towards the Jockstein west end of the stadium Celtic will shoot towards the Lisbon Lions stand left to right as we watch in the main stand here high up above the visiting technical area the two managers at the edge of those technical areas just now in the small shaded bit of the Celtic Park pitch by virtue of the main stand roof above us as that long ball for Celtic finds Palma he's gone for the spectacular opening to the game there he shoots wildly over the bar and it's the first opportunity if you can call it that and it comes for the three in a row champions Packy Bonner it's a, a great day for the Celtic fans who were here long before kickoff. yeah they're enjoying it obviously with the sun out also it's a beautiful day to come out and stand outside and, and uh, almost cheer your team as they come into the stadium and now inside the atmosphere is fantastic for them obviously they want the team to do well there's a lot of players out there uh, now that probably will be trying to answer some questions that the fans have been asking all year uh, and put on a performance and of course then some of them might be looking at a cup final also that they might be involved in so all these questions uh, they can go out there and answer them today by, by putting on a really good performance and picking up from what they did against uh, Kilmarnock. What a different team, you've got to say. 
it is. And there's also a certain right back out there, Stephen McGinn, will be eyeing up a potential start against the Germans at the start of the Euros. And Tony Ralston. Yeah, he's got to be looking at that chance. And I thought it was excellent when he came on late on against Rangers. Not easy to come on in a game like that. And he's, he's filled in so, much, so well at times for Celtic. Chance for Celtic here. It almost broke to O'Reilly. Thumbs up. He was round about the six-yard line. It comes off the Sumerian defender and behind for the game's first corner, which goes to Celtic. Well, Celtic have still got that midfield intact, haven't they? And, and they were combining there between O'Reilly and Atati with a lovely little ball uh, they won their corner Palma with it right through to it it's a great oh, corner oh. as well and it's headed just wide by Wells who met it six yards out and he's unlucky actually a little bit more meat in the header and he's probably putting them ahead in the opening couple of minutes nil nil yeah he's got a score hasn't he really he's got up well he's got good contact on it he just tried to glance it instead of maybe getting a little bit more purchase on it I'm just looking at was a goalkeeper blocked off uh, he was pointing to his chest afterwards that he's, he's been blocked off and got a blow on it but he that was one of them where you would expect a goalkeeper to come and punch Stephen yeah he's got to score Stephen well Stephen Robinson livid with this man they worked so hard in the, in the big side they worked so hard in the set pieces and opening five minutes at Celtic Park and you're giving Stephen Welsh a free head on the centre of the box just one win in their last eight for St Mirren though crucially that was at Dundee in their key post split fixture as Palma picks up on the far side his pass is wayward and it's picked up by the former Celt Marcus Fraser and into the midfield Boyd Munts to O'Hara and Gogic he's been brilliant this season but he's not found a teammate comes off Kuhn who works it out to Ralston back to Welsh in his own half and to Ralston on this near side and then it's back with Stephen Welsh who plays it to Joe Hart who plays for the final time at Celtic Park this afternoon and be retiring after next week's cup final Palma to the underlapping Taylor low ball across cut out by his namesake Richard Taylor on his own six yard line on the slide he puts it out for a Celtic throw in over on that north stand side Palma has it now driving towards the byline low ball Kyogo with a little touch he can only put it behind for the goal kick to St Mirren 4 in 0-0 yeah they're working it down the left hand side between Taylor and Palma and uh, Palma all of these players know that, that you know that the performance has got to be up at the same intensity as was expected and when they watch the team Week it uh, was sensational. I've got to say in the first half, and you know to get into the team, be part of Brendan Rodgers' thinking, they've got to play at the same intensity. And to be fair to Palmer, he started off in that frame of mind early on in this game. Long goal kick from Zach Hemming. Olasanya trying to make it stick. McMenamin trying to get onto the loose ball, but Navrotsky gets there first and finds Taylor into the midfield for Palma. Back to Navrotsky and out to Ralston on this near side. Right of the centre circle. Keep up to date with what's happening in the other two final top six fixtures this afternoon. Hearts Rangers and Dundee Kilmarnock. As Navrotsky steps over halfway, rolls it out to the far side touchline for Palma. Infield to Taylor, back to Palma, infield to McGregor. Level with 18, low ball into the penalty area. Coon's getting it onto it. Turns it back low to Ralston. And a positive start this by Celtic. He'll go to Ralston. Into the penalty area comes the cross. Blocked by Gogic. And Scott Tanzer will whip it clear up this left-hand touchline. Touch there by Coon. Straight though to O'Hara. And then out in this near side, it's McMenamin, who thinks he was fouled, as does his manager. And the referee... Well, it looked as though he was going to ignore the appeals, but it's going to be a Simmering ball down in this near side touchline. That's much better from McMenamin. A couple of times it's been up to Olasanya and McMenamin, it's just come straight back, and all of a sudden it becomes wave after wave of Celtic attacks. Just buying a foul, buying a throw in for those St. Mern guys. The way they play, they can be pinned back into a back five. They have to be really aggressive, and the forward boys are going to be really important to, to stop them becoming that back five. Richard Taylor with a throw up the line, flicked on by McMenamin, bounces off Welsh and out for a throw in to St Mirren, who are getting up the pitch really for the first time in the match. And a throw about level with the edge of the D of the Celtic box on it's this main stand side. It's a significant thing for St Mirren coming here and getting the job done. I mean, the fixtures come out in the last day, Celtic away, potentially a Celtic team to win to win a league. It was really important that one at Dens just to get it all done and dusted and not have to come here needing the result. This way you can come and enjoy it. Maybe Celtic have half an eye in the cup final next week and 
you never get too many chances to win here, so he's picked his strongest team and given himself a chance. Long throw from Bakus is decent towards the six yard line on Asanya trying to get on to it. Bouncing ball, it's only half away, and Marco Hara rifles it home. Hammered home, right footed, bottom left corner. And that is a wonderful strike for O'Hara. His manager enjoyed that one as well. And that spoils the party a little bit in the early stages for the Celtic fans, because after seven, it is Celtic nil, St Mirren one. I just spoke about how much Stephen Robinson works in set pieces. They work their way up the pitch, get a couple of throw-ins. They make Celtic try and have to defend the first and second ball, and it falls beautifully for O'Hara in the box. And He's a really good finisher, scored a lot of goals last year, and that's why he puts himself in the position. He puts it away really nicely. Yeah, the throw-in from Backers on, on, on this left-hand side, it was thrown in with real pace it was almost coming in at head height and it was like a, a almost like a cross rather than looped up in the air and it allowed the front player to get across uh, I, I, I'm not sure who Celtic had in that front position but they got across in front of it and then just flicked it on and then Celtic just struggled to clear it I think it was McGregor that was under the ball not able to get any purchase on the header and when it dropped to O'Hara what a clinical finish real power on it uh, and uh, yeah and it uh, Set Sinburn up. You talked about getting in, you know, slowly getting into the game and maybe surviving the first 20 minutes and that sort of pressure that Celtic would put on you. They've actually done better than that. They've got their goal and that allows them now to build and build throughout this game. Celtic have got to now do something to get the fans going again. Yeah, Stephen's right to highlight Mark O'Hara's goal threat. That is his. 10th goal against Rangers or Celtic he's got a great record against the, the two big Glasgow clubs in front of goal and that was a fabulous finish and Saints have a lead here at Celtic Park as the champions come down the left hand side but it goes behind for the goal kick and of course Hearts beat Celtic here in December but the previous team to beat Celtic here were St Mirren when Jim Goodwin's team did so in uh, January 21 yeah and 60,000 less people there I think it was the Covid season. it was yeah but that would have been a message coming into this game from Stephen Robinson. Celtic, no matter how top a team they are, top players, <laughs> they'll have enjoyed their night a couple of nights ago. I think we've seen some of the scenes long into the night in that Glasgow nightclub. And half an eye in the cup final, can you go and make them? They won't be playing with the same intensity. Can you go and catch them, catch them out? And they've given themselves an unbelievable platform to build on. Stephen, there's no excuses, though, from, from Celtic. And these, this group of players, some of them, know that they've got a, got a chance there because they've won the league uh, and they have to come out and perform no matter what what celebrations are in fact you should be on a real high uh, and that and uh, well so Mirren's certainly not hung over that's for sure as Ralston battles with Tanzar down by his own corner flag he's done well gets it clear but here's Olesanya getting on to it Tanzar's an option on this near side Olesanya wins the throw and off Ralston and settle for that to about level with a Celtic 18 they've been here seven times since they last won here St Mirren without success Dennis and Dormus scoring those historic goals it was their first win here since 1990 when Torfus and Shaw and Lambert scored in a 3-0 win that incidentally their last clean sheet here and it's going to be another long throw for Bacchus it caused problems before and it comes again to the six yard area breaks off Wells, Richard Taylor with a header towards goal Navrotsky gets it away and Palma completes the clearance Bacchus couldn't control the ball and then he obstructs Nicholas Kuhn and that will be a Celtic free kick on this near side but Samirin lead 1-0 on 10 minutes yeah I'm not. I'm not sure, but I'm just. Look, I was just trying to look at the setup there from Celtic defensively. Uh, I would be putting their biggest player into that area where the ball's coming into, and I think it was, and it, it has got to be Nevarovsky coming I think, across. I think Welsh had a good chance there to get a proper header on it, Packy, and he, he doesn't get enough on it, and that's what I'm looking for to keep it alive in the box. Omono well, as well against Palma on the far side. Now with Fraser, right hand side of his own box down the line over on that Simmer and right. Menemann feeding it infield, it eventually comes back to Bomono. Now Fraser, Bomono again, infield to Bacchus. And playing his, or likely to be playing his last game for Simmerin this afternoon. Ryan Strains, another looks to be heading off. He's on the bench for them today. Boosted though by the signing of a new deal by Alexander Gogic. 
in the week as Simmer get a free kick just to the right of the centre circle. McMenamin brought crashing to the ground. Yeah, and, and they're growing in a little bit of confidence, <laughs> St Mirren. They're, they're passing the ball around, and that's something Stephen picked up in his interview before the game that this year uh, he's got them passing a little bit more build up play through the thirds of the pitch, uh, and you can see the evidence of it in, in the last couple of minutes there. The cup tie against Celtic was one of his best performances. Um, on the day, Celtic just had that little bit more quality in attack, but dreadful free kick from him, and he put it straight off Gogic. The touch from Kuhn was poor, though, didn't allow him to blast past him. Simmer and have it back. Think forward towards Olesanya, and Drotsky with the header, and Ralston for McGregor to the left hand side of the circle for O'Reilly. Out to the left-hand side with Palma taking on Bomono again. Good play by Palma. Low ball across, cut out corner off Marcus Fraser. Celtic nil, Simmer in one in 12 minutes. Yeah, delighted to see Palma trying to go to the byline. <laughs> Normally he cuts back in on, a, on his right foot, but that time he had the, the player beaten. Just uh, he couldn't quite get good connection on the cross. Corner will be taken by Palma himself. It's another good one. It's headed half away by Gogic. O'Reilly takes it down. Good spin, but it just bounces off his toe and behind for the goal kick. You're absolutely right, Stephen. It was a good performance in the cup tie, but the early goals, they were always up against it from that point. So that was the issue. You could see just there, Packy, Jamie Langfield, the goalkeeping coach at St. Martin, trying to put put up some sort of defence for Zach Emmons there but that is the sort of thing you don't want to change your mind silly mistake it's going okay for St Mon at the minute no no errors just keep doing what you're doing one ball by Hemming sails over the head of Tanzer and out for the throw in O'Reilly to Ralston back to Welsh and then to Hart and it's going to be picked up on the far side Navrotsky out to the left for Taylor and to Navrotsky again, squares it for Welsh, moving up towards halfway. Got Ralston ahead of him. And Ralston to Kuhn. It's level with the edge of the centre circle in the Saints half. Back to Stephen Welsh. And then Ralston, we're going to slip it behind Tanzer. Tanzer reacts well to it. O'Reilly putting the pressure on. It's now with Gogic who picks up and clears with the right foot. Ralston's header into the midfield. A little bit scrappy this at the moment. Patati gets on to it with the head and finds McGregor. McGregor, low ball, out to Palma on the left. Attacking Bomono again, left angle of the box. Low ball, he's poor and it's picked up by Boyd Muntz and then slipped forward to McMenamin. Now out to Bakus, right of the centre circle in the Celtic half. Bakus rolling it to McMenamin, then out to Pomono's in space. Poor ball, those too much on the pass. It needs to be better, and had it been better, Pomono's on his own, right-hand side of the box. Yeah, and what happened was Palma got the ball, good pass. He cuts back in on his right side. Greg Taylor had made an overlap down the left-hand side, uh, and as uh, soon as then Palma lost the ball, both of them were out of position, and that's where St Mirren tried to exploit down in... Uh, a Celtic sort of left back position and they should have done better there's a chance for Celtic to get onto the ball in the midfield O'Reilly to Navrotsky sweeps it out to Ralston this near side St Mirren with a 1-0 lead we've ticked on to the 15 minute mark goalless in the other two at Tynecastle and Dens so far to Navrotsky right through the ball low out to the left for Palma Reverses it to Taylor at the byline. In comes the cross ball. Headed away well by Tanzer. And Bomono gets on to it. Olesanya trying to take it down. The Celtic fans claim he used a hand, but McGregor's on to it anyway. Here's Hitati. And McGregor to O'Reilly. Wide right for Kuhn. Up against Tanzer. Kuhn on the left. Rolls it back towards the penalty spot. Kyogo can't get on to it. Submitting clear through Gogic. And Welsh plays it to the left of the circle for Navrotsky. Everyone bar Joe Hart in the St Mirren half right now. Taylor on the left-hand side, trying to work the one-two with Palma, but Bomono gets in the way and clears with the right foot up the right-hand touchline. 
And Navrotsky trying to get on to it. And then the challenge from Olesanya puts it out for a Celtic. Throw in over on that far side. They're almost allowing the cross from Celtic to come in. They're, they're just loading up the box and saying, right, try and score a header against us. Celtic are going to have to be a bit quicker. The, the tempo they played the other night has made it really, really hard for Kilmarnock, no matter how much they tried to stick at it. And they'd probably just need to up the pace here. Navrotsky on it, left of the circle, at walking pace forward, then he pushes the ball forward to Taylor, gets the break of it off Pomono. Level with the penalty spot now, short back to Palma, to Hatate, to Palma. He turns it back onto the halfway line for Navrotsky. It's been all Celtic, really, in the last five minutes as they try and find an equaliser. Welsh out to the right-hand side for Kuhn. And then to the underlapping Walston, it's a poor pass, again, too much on it. And it was behind for the goal kick. Celtic nil, Simmer in one. Yeah, good approach play. You know, keeping good control of the game through the midfield, getting into those wide positions, but they've got to make better use uh, of, of the two players you've got to say on the right hand side is Rawlson and Kuhn. On the opposite side, it's Taylor and Palma. They're getting there, but the final ball into the box just uh, or the final pass is just not there at the moment. But they've got lots of control of the game. And that goal came so early in the game that they've got loads of time to get themselves back into it. And he picked up by Marcus Fraser, rolls it back to his keeper. Hemming boots it first time right-footed, high ball. Drops just inside the centre circle with Olesanya's on the turn. Heavy touch allows Navrotsky to find Welsh, and now McGregor to Taylor. And shifts it left to right of the circle for Ralston. To O'Reilly, then back to Ralston. Stephen Robinson looks remarkably calm down there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He's doing well organised. Obviously, the back five. I've just seen Taylor stepping out there into into almost a wide midfield position uh, to uh, confront Matt O'Reilly from his almost left centre back position. So he's allowing him to go into places that maybe naturally they wouldn't go to, just to stop Selig from trying to build the game. Another Celtic corner, meantime. Forced down that left-hand side. Palma will take another in-springer with the right boot. The last two he's taken have been good. That's been fired into the near post again, and Hemming gets there ahead of Kyogo. That's three really fine deliveries by Luis Palma from that far side. The in-swinging corner zipped in towards that near post. I think Kyogo missed it, didn't he? He sort of almost went under it and, and, and went by the post. Uh, and that, and that the goalkeeper did well probably to get a, just any kind of block on it but it was real pace on the corner McGregor, low ball to the right for Ralston inside channel faced by the goal scorer and Simmer and captain O'Hara that's a poor ball from Navrotsky gives it straight to Bomono. Fraser has had his attempted pass charged down by Palma who's back onto it in the far side rolls it infield for Hitati at the byline Chip ball, back post, looking for Kuhn, facing away from Goldo. Now he moves back to the 18-yard line, rolls it to Ralston, he finds O'Reilly, who picks his spot, trying to bend it to the top left. He's off target, swings past the wrong side of the post. Good O'Reilly, 19 in, Celtic nil, St Mirren 1, here was on sports it, it Was it a shot or, or a cross there, Stephen? It, it looked as if initially he was going to cross it, and then he said, I'm going to try this around the back post. But he was well wide, he was, I think it was about two yards wide of the, the right-hand post. He was probably the first time one of the back three's really switched off. Richard Taylor just doesn't see Matt O'Reilly drifting into that space and he almost backs off and allows him the shot. And over the last week, you know not to give Matt O'Reilly the shot and you'd expect him to do a little bit better. It's just one win in 35 visits to Celtic Park for St Mirren. Who have a lead to hold on to here in the Glasgow sunshine. It is with Marcus Fraser. He's back to Hemming. Hemming takes a touch, right-footed ball out to this near side. Tans over the header, he's just kept it in, but O'Hara fouls Ralston, and that's going to be a Celtic free kick on this near side, right in front of Brendan Rodgers' hands and pockets. He's only lost two domestic games at Celtic Park, a Celtic manager, to Aberdeen right at the end of the season in 17-18, and to Hearts last December. As Palma picks up wide in the left, taking on Bomono, who's stood up to that threat pretty well in the almost opening quarter of this one. Welsh picks up, forward low ball, Hitate. Now Kyogo gets on to from O'Reilly in the box. Gogic with the challenge, O'Reilly's there! And he hammers it home! Well, Brendan Rodgers said at the start of the season he wanted Matt O'Reilly to start scoring more. Well, that's him, top scorer for Celtic this season. It's his 19th of the campaign, and it is Celtic 1, 
FC Mirren won on trophy day. Yeah, and I was I was going to say Kyogo must be frustrated because everything's gone wide so far and nothing's come into him. But this time, little header in from O'Reilly initially, uh, and I think it took a deflection. Oh, the goalkeeper's got to save it. I, I, I've just seen the replay of it here, but Kyogo got involved. The ball's come to him, and he's kind of almost headed down into the ground, and the goalkeeper. I, I don't know what he did. He can almost fell back in himself and, and allowed that ball to slip in. But uh, listen, Matt O'Reilly's not complaining. You just spoke about giving Matt O'Reilly three shots in, in your box and how much it can hurt you. Alex Gogic is over in the cover in um, Kyogo, but he's got to get more in the header. He's almost put it onto Matt O'Reilly's left foot. And his back is right. Um, Zach Kemmins has got to do better. When you come in here, the goalkeeper needs to make big saves, and that one probably goes in too easy. He kind of went right through him, he did get a touch on to it. But O'Reilly's responded in kind to Brendan Rodgers' request at the start of the campaign. Remarkable goal-scoring season for Impaki. Yeah. He's seen a bit more with the penalties. Yeah, listen, for Celtic, he's the ideal midfielder. He can play almost in that forward midfield position, but he'll work himself back, but he gets into the box. He it's gets like the Rogic role that, yeah. that when Rogers was here the first time around. The, the difference between him and Rogic, Rogic never ran beyond anybody. He almost played in the pockets and did, listen, he, he was exceptional at times. At times, Probably didn't have the same legs as Matt O'Reilly also, but what Matt O'Reilly does, he's, he's got a, a, a combination of things. He can run, he can get himself into really good positions in the pockets and beyond defenders, uh, and he'll find the spaces really, really well. Deep cross for Celtic into the summer and box is headed away by Richard Taylor. They back into the area by Greg Taylor. Half away, Kuhn gets onto the scraps and finds Ralston, cushion header back towards Kuhn. Cut out though, and Simmerin are back onto it here with Conor McMenamin, the Northern Ireland international on the near side, winning the throw in on this near side. Stephen Robinson out having a word with Richard Taylor just now. It's more animated now, the Simmerin manager. Be very disappointed with the goal they conceded there. A couple of bites at getting it clear. And then the shot itself, as the, the guys are saying there, they feel that Zach Hemming should have saved it anyway. Well, he should have got a block on it, you know, and, and, and made a better effort. Uh, whether he was going to keep it out of the net. But if you've fallen back in yourself and you're not almost set properly... Oh, Welsh has missed it. Olesanya's in up the other end. Down he goes. Penalty's been given. Olesanya brought down by Welsh. He made a complete hash of it. And it's going to be a Samirin penalty as Matt McDermott, the referee, points to the penalty spot. Yes, yeah, bounced over him and, and he got caught, but uh, Osanya was running through. I thought he kind of lost control of the ball a little bit, but he put himself across between the ball and Stephen Welch, and that's probably why the referee has given the penalty. I didn't think there was too much contact in it. It is an unbelievable ball from Scott Tanza. Stephen Welch just gets caught underneath that. And all this, I think you're right, Packy. I don't think he's got it out his body enough to get a shot away, but Stephen Welsh is in a panic because he's the initial mistake and he's just fell over him. It's going to VAR, but I can't see any way this is overturned. Mark O'Hara's got the ball in his hand. He's eyeing up his second of the afternoon. And Matt McDermott is listening to the VAR. Kevin Clancy just now. And R.C. Mirren going to have the chance to restore their lead at Celtic Park. It looks as though the check has survived, so penalty is confirmed. They've had ten penalties this season before this one. They've scored seven of them. O'Hara's failed with two of the six that he's taken. Can Joe Hart go out on a high, or does he lose two goals in his final league game? O'Hara waits. He's already put it into that net with a fine finish. Not from too far away from where he's about to take the spot kick. I mentioned his brilliant record against the big Glasgow clubs. He's got a chance to add another here. Mark O'Hara, the St Mirren skipper. Right-footed penalty. Here he goes and scores! Brilliant spot kick from O'Hara. Away from the grasp of Hart to dive to his left. But O'Hara grabs his second of the game. And for the second time, this afternoon, St Mirren lead, Celtic 1, St Mirren 2. It's unsavable, a brilliant penalty from Mark O'Hara. Great height, good pace on it and really well put away. And, and St Mirren, I mean, you think they're starting to like, lose a bad goal, they're starting to get taken right back into their own half. It gives them such a good platform to go on again. Yeah, 
and, and Joe Hard went the right way for it, dived full length, but it was a brilliant penalty. Pace and up and sort of almost two thirds of, of, of the net, uh, just inside the post, uh, and you're right, unstoppable. It's, just, it's the sort of thing, I mean, you look at this Celtic team any time, kind of, Carter Vickers doesn't play. Well, we've been spoken about before the game, the Olisanya's pace against Stephen Welsh, and can you get it into that channel and make him defend, and Olisanya's done great to win the penalty. Yeah, listen, I, I like young Stephen Welsh, he's a young boy's come through the system, and, 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 and he's a good guy to have there. He's not going to play every single week, uh, he's not going to give you any problems and all that, but that was a, a mistake from him, he should be reading that, and that's probably down to not playing the weekend week out yeah Celtic looking to come forward here down the left hand side and it's Palma back to Greg Taylor who finds McGregor who squares it to Ralston Ralston then turns it back the way to the left for Navrotsky it's been a goal at Dens we're going to go there in just a moment the match between Dundee and Kilmarnock Celtic in the final third here roll back to McGregor squared to Ralston let this attack come to fruition it's O'Reilly's cut out though by O'Hara let's go to Willie Miller at Dens yeah it's for the visitors um, there's been nothing in the game barely a shot in goal but it uh, looks like Gary Mackay Stevens has managed to get the last touch on it Fabulous work uh, from Fraser Murray, picking the ball up in his own half, driving all the way, just outside the penalty box. He's had the strike, it go, it's uh, deflected and ricocheted down for Mackay Stevens to drill it into the back of the net to give Kilmarnock a lead here. Rare start, rare goal these days for Gary Mackay. Stephen Kilmarnock lead at Dens against Dundee. Hearts Rangers, that continues on medium wave, on extra and on digital. It is goalless commentary of that one we're looking for it here at Celtic Park it is St Mirren who lead 2-1 here comes Celtic with Palma down the left is cross cut out by Buomono and Celtic have another corner and they've been excellent from that over on that far side so far yeah he's got he's got to get across in though he's got loads of space and room there to put his foot round that ball but he's he's obviously not that comfortable on his left side as he is on his right from Palma, it's another decent one, it's headed away by Gogic, up into the air, more height than distance though, Welsh gets onto it, hits it out to Palma, the referee's going to stop play for a head knock though, Welsh went up there and he's landed awkwardly, although he's sitting back up, but he's wiped out one of the St Mirren players who was challenging with him. Just come on, is it? Yeah. It's been a tough start to the game for Stephen Welsh, Packy, isn't it? He had that glorious opportunity early in the match to score and then made a hash of that bouncing ball there. And yeah. it's, it's an important phase in Stephen Welsh's career. I know what you're saying about him being a young man and all that, but he's 24. Yeah, but, but he's not been able to get a, a proper run in the team uh, and uh, get games. And uh, You know, I keep going back to that. You can train all day, you can train every, every day of the week, you can train... Unless you play and play games, your judgment, your decision making, all of those things is, is under pressure. That's the, when 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 you found out a little bit, uh, and he just misread that ball uh, and that, and you know, Stephen, I, I if I was a, a manager in another team in the, in Scotland, I would be looking closely at Stephen to bring Stephen if, if he can if he's not going to get a game here and I know he'll be on half decent money and he's a good 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 but he's a good type that's the key and if he gets games week in week out I think he can perform for you especially if you're playing maybe with three at the back where he could play on the right side of, of a three so you lead half an hour in Bit of a stoppage there, looks as though both players are going to be okay, and it's game on again. And it's Celtic with Navrotsky to Welsh in the centre circle, and out to O'Reilly on this near side. Low ball onto the touchline for Kuhn, up against Tanzer. Up to the right angle of the box, dinked ball in, comes right through to Hemming, who holds on. How many of these Celtic players, Packy, do you think are knocking on the door for a, a cup final place next week? I'm not talking about McGregor and O'Reilly and Taylor, who are probable shoe-ins to start. Yeah, I think the week. big I think the big decision is going to be do you go with Kyogo or do you go with Adamida? After his performance midweek, Adamida was sensational, I thought, as a as a, a 
an all-round striker. Uh, but you can see, obviously, that Kyogo, uh, he makes those little runs, but he, he certainly must be frustrated at times when you're making those runs and the ball never comes to you. Uh, and that, But you can't throw a ball into the box. Uh, there is the run from him, yeah. perfect run, and uh, just overhead from Tony Ralston. But he does that, and he does that exceptionally well. And he, and he of course, scores goals against Rangers in the big games. And he frightens, frightens defenders because of his pace and his movement. And, and that's, seven, but, but that is the decision, I think. And I think he probably will go with Kyogo to start, but he has always got Adamita to come on to give a, a completely different, uh, almost way of playing. He's got seven goals against Rangers, Kyogo. And as Ralston picks up, finds Welsh, and then back to Joe Hart. He's been annoyed to have conceded twice in his final Celtic Park appearance. Oh, he'll be angry. He'll be annoyed, absolutely annoyed and frustrated. Here comes Palma driving down the left-hand side. He's at level with the six-yard line of St Mirren. They're protecting this lead here. Palma looking to reverse it to Hitate. And it will be seen behind by Keanu Bacchus for a goal kick. It's a good performance by Simmer and this, Stephen. They've, they've come here. They, the difference between this one and last month is they've got goals. Yes, and, and I think I think they're enjoying the changes that Celtic have made. I think when you look at Dyson Maida and James Forrest's performance the other night, they were almost unplayable. They're, they're allowing Nicholas Kuhn and Lewis Palmer to get at them, and they're not so worried. You, you could see how worried the Kilmarnock players were, and they were trying to drag people off to, to help, and then the midfield players would become available. So among fullbacks here are just comfortable to go against these wingers one-on-one. One, one here is Olesanya for St Mirren. He's in for his pace today ahead of the top scorer, Mandarin. He's been challenged well by Ralston, but here's Bakus picking up at the edge of the box, decides to shoot, comes off Navrotsky. And behind for a St Mirren corner. Yeah. On that uh, right-hand side, the northwest corner of the stadium. Yeah, good play again from St Mirren. One in the second ball in midfield uh, through Olesanya, and then can I almost on the front foot rather than coming back, keeping the ball. They're driving at Celtic when they get little spaces and opportunities. And it's Keelan Boyd Munch to take the corner. And the midfielder from Belfast dying up the Celtic box. In swinger with the left foot coming up here. And he goes. It's very deep towards the back post. Oh, Hannah! It's the post! He's the width of the post away from a hat trick. Oh, he's got, he's got a score, really. A free header at the back post. Uh, and Nowroski was picking him up and, and didn't deal with it. Didn't actually go for the ball, Nowroski. And, and, uh, and uh, it was a, a header that just could have crept in between the crossbar and the post. Just hit the outside of the post. Matthew McDermott spared his blushes, I think, by giving a foul for a push. But when you look at the chance he had, you'll never get a better chance to score a hat-trick here. First half hat-trick uh, from the Samirin captain. He, you would see him score that nine times out of ten. Was it but Curtis Main should have scored a hat trick here last season for St Mirren? Yeah, but that's all set pieces. That's a problem for Celtic. Here's Ralston, rolling it to the right of the St Mirren box for Kuhn, stepping away from Tanzer, going down. Wag of the finger from the referee though. He was just inside the penalty area, I think. Kuhn had got goal side of Tanzer. He yeah. goes down. So yeah. there was Zach Hemming. Lawrence Shanklin's given Hearts the lead against Rangers at Tynecastle. 31 goals for the season. He needs, uh, I think, another couple to equal John Robertson's record just before Robertson headed to Newcastle in the late 80s. And it's Hearts 1, Rangers now. What a season for Shanklin. I wonder if 31 goals gets him a start against Germany and Munich in a few weeks' time. Stephen Naismith spoke about Stephen Kingsley not being able to do it anymore to, to do it for himself to get into the squad but Lauren Shankland can't possibly do any more to try and get a start for Scotland an amazing season and it's been recognised by everyone players, the writers for a fantastic season Notice Shea Adams wasn't involved at all for Southampton last night not even on the bench as Gogic makes a hash of it at the back Kilgore goes down claims he was tripped it's offside it was well it's offside off. he's off before the trip I think that might explain the kind of lackadaisical approach that Alex Gogic took to that. Yeah, he was well offside. He was at least two yards offside. And, and again, you know, put the flag up when it's two yards. You know, you don't have to wait them too much, do you? But you could see Celtic are getting frustrated with just the balls out to the wingers and they're not getting a lot of joy. That's a couple of times now Anthony Ralston's looked for that ball in for Kyogo and 
he's just always ready for it. I know he, he, he's offside there, but he's just always looking for it. He almost gets frustrated it's not played even sooner. Well, they are checking for a possible penalty here, despite the fact it looked clearly offside. Oh, he was well offside. Yeah, offside's the decision. I'm not sure why they needed the, the theatre after that, but anyway, there will be a free kick for St Mirren. We're in the final nine minutes of the 45. Celtic 1, St Mirren 2. Hemming with a long ball forward. Welsh is underneath it, challenging with Tanzer. And it's headed out for a throw in for Saints on this near side. They've battled so well, St Mirren, and when they've come forward, they've come forward with menace. They have indeed, yeah, and uh, they're, they're, of course there's nothing to lose, they're, they're confident, their they're pressure's off them. Satati driving down the right-hand side, Palma's waiting in the middle, Kyogo's got there as well, and Kyogo scores! Classic Kyogo! Saw the chance was coming, and Rio Hitati down the right, found his compatriot, six yards out, and he slams it home first time into the bottom right corner to bring Celtic level for a second time it is Celtic 2 St Mirren 2 yeah classic Hatati also getting into that wide position down the right hand side and you knew that there was going to be a good ball coming in that's what you want from your wingers <laughs> but the midfielder produced and Kyogo off like a lightning once he laid it into his path and got himself into a great position at the near post where we've often seen him score goals from Liam, you've just spoke about St Mirren looking comfortable. We we felt they were comfortable, but it's very important for the players not to feel comfortable. You switch off here and you'll get punished like that. Caelan Boyd Munns needs to do better to the throw in. He takes the ball, he allows Rio Hatati to rob him of the ball, and within five seconds the ball's in the back of your net. Matt O'Reilly was Celtic's top scorer for 15 minutes. Kyogo draws level with him again with his 19th of the campaign. And here they come again, down the right-hand side, it's Kyogo, it's an early ball for Palma, who heads wide. Really good build-up play by Celtic, this time down the right, it's an excellent ball by Kyogo. Palma dived, he stretched his neck muscles, but he couldn't divert it on target, and on 38, it stays at two apiece. He's got a score, he's got, he didn't even have to stretch his muscles, it was coming straight onto his head, it was bending onto him. Uh, and all he's doing is just get the strong head on it, just let it hit your head into the back of the net, and it's glanced off the side of his head well, well wide. But what a good ball in from Kyogo. You can't believe he's missed Paki. The ball from Kyogo is almost come and head me, come and score, come and put us back into, uh, into the lead. But it just shows you, you switch off here, you make a mistake, and within the blink of an eye, you could have been 3 2 down. So some money to regain your uh, composure here and get in at half time 2 2. Yeah, their first lead lasted 17 minutes. The second one was uh, more short-lived, 11 minutes. And two O'Hara goals, but O'Reilly and Kyogo have responded for Celtic, and it's Greg Taylor with a long ball and right through to Hemming, who holds on. And then amongst all of this, four goals in the first half. It's been an entertaining game on the final day. Yeah, it has, and uh, that's what listen, that, that's what we want to see: goals, chances, uh, creativity, uh, and uh, it's been good. And Sir Mern have had those mostly from set pieces, but the build-up play to those set pieces was was excellent. Celtic from open play. Uh, I've got to say. Uh, you know, O'Reilly linking up with Kyogo, Kyogo, Hatati linking up with Kyogo, and then that last chance from Palma could have been three, but uh, and that open play you expected from Celtic somewhere along the line. You, but you've got to match them, uh, and uh, you match them by scoring goals, and you also match them by good defending. And uh, but sometimes they're they're so good that they, you know defending doesn't really matter. You you, you you just got to hold your hand up and say that was excellent. Two apiece here, Hearts 1, Rangers 0, Shanklin with the goal, Mackay Stephen is Kilmarnock 1-0 up at Dens against Dundee. Later, 3 o'clock, we're on air throughout, of course, Sports Sound, you get a chance to listen in to the post-match reaction from this and 
hearing from the supporters in Mojave until 5 o'clock when off the ball comes on but Stranraer East Kilbride in the second leg of the Pyramid Playoff Final 2-2 ahead of that one at Stair Park Stranraer viewing that as the biggest game in their history massive match for both those clubs and at 5.30 Cali Thistle Hamilton live on BBC Alipa Aki's with a 2-1 lead to take North to the Highland Capital Cali Thistle are they about to drop into the third tier Dumbarton, of course, last night seeing off Spartans League One football for them next season. And Wraith Rovers through to the Premiership playoff final where they will take on either Ross County or St Johnston. That gets sorted out tomorrow here on BBC Radio Scotland. Here comes Celtic down the left-hand side with Palma. Four to the break. In comes the cross from Greg Taylor. It's headed half away and then Ralston catches it. Sliced volley towards goal over the bar. And it remains Celtic two. Seeing that in two. Yeah, it's a day that you would try a shot like that. <laughs> Why not? Uh, he's just kind of got under it and, and, and it went over the crossbar. But yeah, go for it, young man, I would say. I don't think Stephen Robinson would be overly disappointed with Anthony Ralston trying to half volley from 25 yards. It allows Zach Hemmings to buy a bit of time here and just get the bit of composure back. Well, they've only lost one of their last 63 home games, Celtic against Hearts takes back to that Simmerin game domestic games of course they've been in excellent form and if they win this one they'll finish on 93 points which should be a pretty good tally we'd have to say let's go to Willie Miller at Dent's been another goal it's an equaliser uh, for Dundee um, Cameron down the right hand side he uh, drills a ball across the face. Uh, Luke McCowan made no mistake and drilling it into the back of the net. The flag then went up and we had a long wait uh, to, de to decide whether Cameron was offside or not. So VAR decided that it wasn't offside and the goal was given. So it's 1-1 here at Dens. 1-1 there. Hearts 1, Rangers nil. 2 apiece here, heading towards half-time in the three top six matches. As I say, the bottom six to come tomorrow, Livingston Hibs. Not much on that, but plenty on the other two. Motherwell, St Johnston, Ross County, Aberdeen. There's commentary on the two frequencies of both those games at Fir Park and in Dingwall, who is going to face Wraith Rovers in the playoff. It will also be live here on the radio Thursday first leg, Sunday second leg, either side of the Scottish Cup final, which is also live here on Sportsang on BBC Radio Scotland. Here is Mike Navrotsky for Celtic. Low ball out to the touchline for Greg Taylor. And back to Navrotsky. A difficult first season at the club for the Pole, who was born in Germany, he arrived in the summer. Five year deal, it was around about 5 million euros that Celtic spent. And it's Navrotsky on the ball again. He turns it out to Palma on the touchline. Back to Greg Taylor. Midway inside the summer and half left footed. Drifted ball in. Brilliant. And it's over the bar by Hitate. That's brilliant play down the left-hand side. It's a wonderful, deft, lobbed ball into Hitate's path, but he can only put it over. It remains two apiece as we go into the final minute of the 45, and there's going to be a minimum of two added on to the end of the first half. It would have been a wonderful goal, wouldn't it? You know, lovely pass, good run, timing of a run, just coming out of the air, hits it on the volley, just couldn't probably steer it on target, but... Uh, Exceptional play, but that quality that Hatati has also, you know, and, and leaving his midfield position running beyond, again, good midfield play. It's in the centre circle here with Marcus Fraser back to Gogic, out to Tanzer on the near side. And we'll slip it back to Richard Taylor, long ball with the left, Welsh is underneath it with the head, and then O'Reilly just dinks it back to his keepers. Nonchalant as you like from Matt O'Reilly. It's going to be interesting to see if Celtic are going to be able to keep hold of him. It's going to take a huge bid, obviously, for someone to chisel Matt O'Reilly out of Celtic Park. And I think there'll be plenty. Brendan Rodgers certainly will be one of them. We'll be hoping that he's in the green and white hoops next season. Snodrotsky turns it out to the left. Greg Taylor down the line for Palma. So we're trying to see you through to the break here, at least on terms. Palma back to Taylor, and then back to McGregor, to Greg Taylor on the far side. And back into his own half for Navrotsky. It's these 
usual crucial moments here. Stephen saw Dundee and Ibrox the other night conceded a goal very late in the first half and eventually crumbled in the second. Stephen Robinson be desperate for his team to get to the break here at 2-2. Yeah, you can see him just edging out of his touchline area here, just trying to make sure they can go over the line and frustration there at giving the cross uh, the corner away from Mark O'Hara. Yeah, it came in from the left and O'Hara slices it behind and Celtic will have a late first half corner here. Thomas yeah. is going to take they've got a man down though on the yeah. first is it Greg Taylor Packy? yeah I think it is Greg Taylor I, I don't know whether he's clashed with, with uh, Alex Gogic um, and that but he, he, he's up back on his feet I don't think he's seriously hurt I didn't, quite, I didn't quite see what happened but it looked as if Alex Gogic just gone over and, and pulled him up and shook his hand so it must have been a, a, a coming together but he's okay Second of the two minutes that were added. There might be a little bit on top of that now. Palma over on the far side. Take one of these whipped in corners in swinger from that left hand side in front of the standing section here at Celtic Park. And he is given the nod to take it. Looks for some movement in the six yard area again and it comes, flicked off the line by Richard Taylor for another corner on this near side I was going to say if that goes in, he's been threatening that all game Luis Palma Yeah, I, I just wonder whether the goalkeeper game was blocked off but he, he seemed to have been nowhere didn't, like it's right under, almost under the crossbar O'Reilly will take this corner in front of the Simmerin supporters left footed and it comes more drifted in towards Kyogo headed away and as far as Hitate, and back to Ralston, who then turns it out to this near side for O'Reilly with an added time, and added time now, O'Reilly looking for Kuhn, but your Taylor was too strong for him, and it goes behind for the goal kick, and that is it for the first half at Celtic Park. St Mirren come here to play, there's no question about that, twice they've lead, twice they've led this game to Mark O'Hara, the first was a fine finish, rifle to Right-footed into the bottom left. Wasn't great defending from Celtic for either of the Simmering goals. It was cancelled out by Matt O'Reilly's 19th of the season. Which for a brief time put him on top of the scoring charts for Celtic. Simmering back in front. Olisanya bundled to the ground by Stephen Welsh after Welsh had made an error in judging a long ball. O'Hara stepped up to stroke home the spot kick. Fabulous into the top right corner away from Joe Hart. And then it was Kyogo's turn to equalise as he turned home Atate's wonderful ball in. Celtic could have had another couple of goals, should have had another couple of goals to be fair, maybe even three to add to their tally. But they are all square at the break on party day for the champions. But it is Celtic two, Sigmar and two. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. You're listening to Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland, an entertaining final day in the top half of the Premiership. Celtic 2, St Mirren 2, Dundee 1, Kilmarnock 1, Hearts 1, Rangers 0, still playing. In fact, they're just about to finish in that game there at Tyne Castle. So we'll welcome back listeners who've been enjoying that commentary shortly. Tom English, Leanne Crichton and Michael Stewart alongside me in the studio. Leanne, it's been a really exciting first half, hasn't it? Lots of action. Yeah, it's been good, yeah. Lots of action, certainly lots of goals at, at Celtic Park. Um, listen, St Mirren spoke the, early on the this afternoon about going to Celtic Park, looking to spoil the party, looking to concentrate on themselves, get a benchmark for where they're at. Uh, and then the other game over at, at Tyne Castle, of course, Rangers trailing. You're looking at two strikers at opposite ends of the pitch. Dessers, who struggles to score for six yards and, and somehow manages to find the keeper and then Lauren Shankland with an unbelievable, just classy dink mm. over Jack Butland, who has spoke about how good he's been all season as well. But uh, yeah, lots of action and goals elsewhere, of course, at Willie's game. Yeah, speaking of the strikers, Tom, you said in the studio when we're watching the games coming in, Shankland goes through. It's inevitable. You just know what's going to happen. It's just, it's just a, it's just a brilliant, brilliant finish. And yeah, as soon as it, as soon as he goes through, you think, okay, he's going to score this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how is he going to score it? Which option is he going to take? And it's just a beautiful, subtle little dink um, over the goalkeeper, and 
It's a, it's a gorgeous, subtle finish from him. Just going to replay, sorry, the, the chance at Dessler's yes, mercy. Yes, talk, yes, talk us through yeah, it, Liam. Yeah. Ross McCausland does really well. Hearts are building it for the back, and Ross McCausland goes and nicks it. I think he's off Frankie Kent, was that? Oh, my He squares goodness. it across the six to Dessler's, who has literally... I mean, Clark's pedalling to get back in. The goalies get pretty much three quarters of the goal we have. We're going to see it for a better angle here. Ross McCausland puts it on a plate for Dessers and he somehow manages to put it clean into the arms of Clark. It's an incredible miss. The one... And look, he's got to score. But <laughs> I would say McCausland needs to do better. He plays it. He's under no pressure because he's done well to win it. But he plays it just ever so slightly um, behind Dessers. So I was going to bring that up, Michael. So I saw Dessers do the gesture with the arms. And what's he yeah. talking about? Do you think the pass could have been better? I mean, it's... He should be scoring regardless. It's not like McCausland's played it at his neck. You know, he's played it on the ground. It's slightly behind him. If, you know, you're just trying to be ever so but slightly picky. But he squared him, though, in terms of his two defenders? The offside, there's a ball on. He's kind of almost like played it back the way. There's the two uh, players uh, are in line. I think Des, that's, all, that's all on Des. Des, Des is a gesturing to, you know, play the ball in front of me. But come on. You know, <laughs> he's right in front of goal. The he's goalkeeper's got, scrambling to, to regain his ground. He's got to score, but it's not the best ball for McCausland. No, it's not, but it's he should still, as yeah, you say, I, I, should still score. And we've just seen the Shanklin finish again. It's absolutely sad. class. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely top drawer. Here we go, right. Michael. Just describe it, Michael. Well, he's running through goals. The defenders are bearing down on him. But, Butland's coming out to close him down, but he just looks in control the whole yeah. time. Yeah. And, you know, he's running through on the inside left channel, and you're thinking to yourself, well, he's in a good position here. What's he going to do? Or he might maybe dink the goalkeeper? And, you know, he does exactly that. <laughs> it's, a, it's nice and easy sitting watching it and talking about yeah. it. But he's out in the park. But that's the whole point. He just looks in complete control. Yeah, he just with a cheap turnover. I think it's, uh, uh, it's Todd Cantwell who gives away a lazy ball. And then I think it's Oda that slips it through. Really nice ball in behind the defence. And he's, he's charged through. He's in complete control. The space he has, the space he has as well. How, uh, you know, Rangers allowing him that amount of space. Right, speaking of strikers, I've got a wee poser for you all a bit later in the programme. Welcome back to listeners who've been tuned in to that commentary from Tyne Castle. We'll get a half-time report. We'll get a half-time report from Willie Miller. He is at Dens Park this afternoon, but it's trophy day at Celtic Park. Let's get to our commentary team there. Stephen McGinn, Pat Bonner and Liam McLeod. Good game, this. Samirin of... Uh come here perform pretty well but Celtic have been good as well and although it's 2-2 at the break Celtic probably should be ahead in the match and they've had to come from behind twice in this one as I say Samirin have been decent they've come with a little bit of a threat as well as they did last month the difference today has been they've managed to get goals and it's a double from Marco Hara with seven minutes fabulous finish with the right foot into the bottom left which was threatening to spoil the party here. O'Reilly equalising on 21 for his 19th of the season before Olisania was brought down in the box by Welsh after the Celtic defender had misjudged a, a long drifted ball through. O'Hara stuck the penalty home. It was a magnificent strike, actually, into the top right. That in 24 minutes. Kyogo, though, on to the Hitate cross, smashed it home. But they've had other opportunities. Stevie Welsh should have scored. Palma should have scored both with headers. They've had guilt edge chances. And Stephen Robinson, I suppose, for Stephen McGinn and Packy Bonner watching this one. For Stephen Robinson, firstly, Stephen, just delighted to get in at the break level. Yeah, I think he'll be frustrated with the manner of the second Celtic goal. St. Martin had a throw in, as you spoke about in commentary, they were comfortable in the, in the game. Boyd Munch gets caught in the ball, and before you know it, it's 2 2, which makes it a much more challenging afternoon. But he'll have spoke before the game. Listen, whether ever they say about the replacement, Celtic aren't as defensively sound within Cameron Carter Vickers. Every team in the league tries to exploit it, and I think some of them have exploited it today. Yeah, half time, Celtic Park, Celtic two, Simmer and two. Thank you to our team there, full second half commerce to come, also second half commerce to come from Tyne Castle. Let's get to our team there Billy Dawes, John Robertson, and Rob McLean. Yeah, Kenny, uh, hearts are halfway towards doing what they haven't done so far this season. They've lost five out of five against Rangers, uh, but they've delivered the platform here to get what would be a, a big win for them on the final day of the season against Rangers. You can uh, sometimes oversimplify things, but this is really a tale of the two number nines in the in the first half. Cyril Desser is that constant source of frustration to the Rangers fans, despite the fact he's got 22 goals for the season, but he really should have had number 23 here. The biggest side relief inside the ground belonged to Kai Rolls, who gave it away at the edge of the box, stolen by McCausland. He rolled it across 
cross and uh, Dessers really should have been scoring but it was a team effort which led Xander Clark to make the save down at the other end racing in on goal on the end of an Oda pass uh, was Lawrence Shankland and as you've been saying in the studio you just know exactly what happens next he lured Jack Butland off his line waited for the Rangers keeper to commit and then clipped a lovely left footer over the top of him for the only goal of this game so far 31 goals for Hearts plus one for Scotland in Georgia he has had some season the source of frustration for the Hearts fans will be that uh, surely he is going to be spirited away elsewhere in the summer you would imagine but it's another chance to enjoy what he does the contrast between the two number nines massive and uh, Hearts have kicked on from that opening goal John Robertson they believe in themselves now in this game a whole lot more <laughs> they do the first 25 minutes was definitely Rangers and they should have been 1-0 up you know I'm sorry lads in the studio uh, McCausland's rolled on a plate for uh, Dessers he's got to score he misses it and then you know what comes next it's a you know he had a wee sighter he had a half chance from a flick on from a throw in he hooked just over the bar then the moment came the two centre halves get lured to the ball it goes in behind them he goes through and he's just waited and I think that it's, it's a great description of he just clips it beautifully beautifully over the keeper into the net 31 goals astonishing and I said then I say now you know hearts are where they are due largely to Lawrence Shankland's goals and Rangers are where they are due to Cyril Dessa's misses Taylor the two strikers isn't it one assured one not and that's that's the story of the half you can't go anywhere else I mean Dessa's for me shouldn't have lifted it that was his problem he should just bury it with a, a ruthless mindset along the grass and, and Xander Clark's got no chance and then you see the other one one thriving with confidence through knows exactly what he's doing especially when a quality goalkeeper like Butland flying at you and he still knew just to lift it into the net and so that is simply the story of the half Rob Stevie Clark is watching here he's watching Xander Clark of course in goals for Hearts with Craig Gordon on the bench he's also watching Hearts captain and top goal scorer doing what he does he has been in fine form he's done everything in this first half including scoring the only goal so far Hearts 1 Rangers nil. thank you to our team there full second half commentary come from Tynecastle Park let's get to Dens Park Dundee at home to come on it this afternoon there for us Willie Miller yes uh, Ken it's been a brilliant season for uh, both these teams and uh, the managers uh, jousting for uh, the manager of the year as well award so um, unfortunately the game has not lived up to um, you, you know the season that they've had it's, it's been a rather dull and dreary affair um, the, the, the sun is out maybe that's having an effect on them but I just think there's nothing at stake and uh, that's how it's been played out here it did liven up uh, as the game went on a little bit and we have had a couple of goals so I shouldn't be complaining too much I don't suppose uh, the first one coming in 24 minutes uh, for the visitors uh, Fraser Murray it was it picked the ball up in his own ha half uh, Tony Docker they will not be happy about the marking and the closing down he run what a good 50 yards before he strikes the ball from just outside the box it takes a little deflection and it falls to Gary Mackay Stevens who burrows on it and drills it into the back of the net to give Kilmarnock uh, the lead uh, Kilmarnock had another couple of opportunities Gary Mackay Stevens again good curler left foot just by uh, the far upright and Watkins with an excellent cross to uh, Fraser Murray who at the back post should have done much better it was a very very weak uh, header but Dundee did get back into the game in 37 minutes it uh, was Scott Tiffany down the right hand side drilled across uh, across the face of the goal and there was Luke McCowan coming from a midfield position to absolutely slam it into the back of the net um, the, the flag then went up by the uh, linesman VAR checked it the linesman was wrong VAR was right corrected the decision and the goal was given so here at half time at Dens it's 1-1 Thank you to Willie Miller at Dens Park. So in the top half of the Premiership today, Celtic 2, St Mirren 2, Dundee 1, Kilmarnock 1, Hearts 1, Rangers 0. We'll bring in the pundits in the studio onto this one, Pat, but I'd love your thoughts on Stephen Welsh. What do you believe is best for him right now? What does he need to do to progress as a player? Well, obviously, uh, you know, he's not he's not a young boy anymore, so he's in that sort of middle 20s, and he's got to play football. That That's the, that's the point for him. Now, he, he'll be on a half-decent contract at Celtic. Uh, I'm not sure if other maybe clubs 
and the league couldn't match that uh, so he, he'd be comfortable that, that way but I think for a young man you've got to try to get into the team and play week in week out because it's all about your decision making it's all about being sharp and you know he, he got found out for, for the for the, the goal today uh, and I, I put that down to probably maybe misreading the situation and just his decision making more than anything else uh, but he's done well before in the past when he's come into Celtic he lacks a few inches in height um, to be maybe you know a, a, one of the one of the centre halves that you rely on to go and head every single ball uh, uh, from that perspective but I think he could go and play and, and a back three he could play the of course, a double centre half. You've got another one who can go and deal with the ball in the air, uh, but, uh, but he, he can pass the ball. He's quick enough, so I think he could do a job for for somebody. Whether he would be a main guy here at Celtic, I'm not a hundred percent sure now that that's going to be the case. Uh, so I think he may have to go on somewhere else and develop himself. But that's up to him. That's up to what he believes in, what he should do. Uh, and I suppose up to Sully Football Club too to allow. Could he go out and loan to somebody if they buy somebody next year? But they have to get players in first. They have. Listen, they've got lots of centre halves. They've got Lagabelka, who I don't think will be here. They've got Noroski, who's playing here today. Is Stephen as good as him? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so he, he's going to be. But he, is he is better than Carter Vickers? No. Is he better than Liam Scales at this moment in time? No, probably. Uh, so he's always going to be that player who's got to, to back up those players and if that's what he wants to do as a young man fine but I think any young man needs to want to play week in week out I mean for me I would imagine that um, you know the stage that Stephen Wells is at uh, correct me if I'm wrong I'm pretty sure he signed a new contract earlier in the season as well um, I think it was maybe a four year contract that he, you know a new four year contract so with regards to you know his his future at Celtic, it's secure in so much as that he's signed a new deal. If I was him next season, I'd be knocking on the manager's door and saying, "Look, I'd really like to go out on loan." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Stephen Welsh is a good centre half, but he's he's not good enough to be playing for Celtic every week at this stage. So going out and playing on loan for a for a Hibs, for example, would be uh, it would make a lot of sense on a number of fronts. And you would imagine. And we've said this already, they need to go and sign a centre-half next season, which is just only going to knock his um, standing further down the pecking order. I think I can see there, huge Tifo, Joe Hart over here, love to see that over in the corner there. I think that was maybe just perhaps a wee acknowledgement there, a wee thumbs up, what a signing he has been for Celtic. So once again, a choice of listening on sports. And for commentary from Celtic Park, where the champions will wrap up their premiership season, they face St Mirren today. Stick with us, 92 to 95 FM and BBC Radio Scotland on BBC Sounds. If it's Hearts Against Rangers you're looking for, tune to BBC Radio Scotland Digital, 810 Medium Wave and BBC Radio Scotland Extra on BBC Sounds. And both are live online at bbc.co.uk forward slash Sports Scotland. Football from Sports Sound. Brilliant drop of the shoulder! Oh! From BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. Welcome back from Celtic Park. Liam McLeod, Stephen McGinn, Packy Bonner with you for the second half of this one. And as Kenny was saying, it's quite the Tifo and Banner over on the far side as the Celtic fans pay tribute to Joe Hart who will retire after the Scottish Cup final next week after that. Long career, he's been part of all three of these successive triumphs for Celtic in the league. It's a great banner, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of him just almost standing with his hand in the air, but it's, it's beautifully done, actually. Some of them are absolutely brilliant. I think loads of clubs are doing them just now. And the the one um, which was devoted to your your friend Tommy Burns the other night, Packy, was Thank magnificent you. as well, wasn't it? Yeah, excellent, absolutely. Uh, and that, and that. Celtic, oh. sorry, Packy. Yeah, go on ahead. Yeah, Celtic just kicking off the second half. I'll let you finish there, Packy. No, no, I'm just saying that you know these. These, uh, that's the kind of uh, tributes that I like. I like this. I don't like the political stuff. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I like this where you're almost uh, celebrating your heroes, your, your players, the people who are doing something for the club. 
No changes for either team at the start of the second half. Celtic shooting right to left in the green and white hoops. Simmering in their change colours with the red tops, black shorts, red socks with the black tops. Celtic in! And Hemming gets away with it. He came up to his 18-yard line and Kuhn patted it off him. It came ricocheting back off the Celtic man and it pings out to this near side. I was having visions of Maida at Ibrox last month there, Stephen. Yeah, Scott Tanzer leaves it a bit short, but I think Zach Kemmins has gave that sort of afternoon. He's, he's down injured just now. I think he's looking for treatment from the collision, but he's been so erratic all afternoon, and Tanzer's not sure if he actually wants it to go back to him or if he's just to deal with it. In the end up, he goes with giving it to, to Zach Kemmins, and it's just a collision between Nicholas Kuhn, and as you say, the ball could have ended up easily in the, in the back of his own net. Yeah, he's having one of those days. I, I, I've been... You know, impressed with Zach Hemming over the thing. I, I think he picks up decent positions, especially when I watched him at, at, at in other games against Celtic it's, and, and St. Mern Park. And that he, he, he did very, very well. But he seems to be a little bit all over the place today. His kicking has been poor. Taki, I played with him at Kilmarnock. He's still such a young player for a, for a goalkeeper. It's just these afternoons of concentration to go and be a top goal co goalkeeper because he's got all the attributes, but it's just afternoon, afternoons like this that hold him back. It happened. Happened the best. Yeah, on loan from Middlesbrough. Stephen says he had a couple of loans at Kelly during that promotion season. As Hart picks up for Celtic, the green smoke that was behind that depot billowing across the north stand, top tier over on that far side. As Navrotsky picks up Tart and goal for Celtic, Ralston, Welsh, Navrotsky, Taylor, O'Reilly, McGregor, Hitate, Kuhn and Palma and Kyogo. For St Mirren, Hemming and goal, Fraser, Gogic, Richard Taylor, Bomono and Tanzer, Bakus, O'Hara, Boyd Munts, McMenamin and Olesanya. And it's Celtic on the ball, Kuhn looking to spring Kyogo here, loops the ball towards the Celtic striker who's holding off Marcus Fraser, the referee. Acknowledging a flag on the Offside. far side, it will be a free kick to St Mirren. It's two apiece early in the second half. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether uh, I'm looking at those key players that Celtic have in their team, you know, Riley, Hakati, uh, McGregor, uh, and Kyogo to a point. Um, will, will the manager get to a point here? Will, will he make the changes, get them off the pitch just to wrap them in a bit of cotton wool for next week? He's got enough players on the bench that he can make those changes. Peter Urminski, the subbed Simmering goalkeeper, is doing a little bit of a warm-up just now, just in the wake of Hemming receiving a bit of treatment. Celtic on the ball with Kuhn, chipping it forward on that right-hand side, looking for Hitati, it's cut out, Gogic to the far side, O'Hara finds himself on the touchline. And it's rolled all the way back to Hemming, the edge of his own box, long ball. will come all the way through to Joe Hart. I can see Stephen Robertson frustrated down there. He's been frustrated all day with the, with the goal. He just, I know he's, he probably has a wee knock and, and he's just wanting to get that ball away from him, but he just overcooked it so much. There's a chance for Palma, potentially. Bomono closes the door and knocks it out far. <laughs> has it gone for the corner? I think it might have gone for the corner rather than the throw it has on this near side of Celtic. Right to left, attacking the Jock Steen stand end of the stadium. We watch from the main stand that is off to our left. And it's a Palma corner. As we were saying, these were brilliant in the first half, these corners, and it comes to the near post. And then it bounces off a submitting defender, ricochets back to Kuhn, who tries to shoot for a goal, it comes off the defender and behind for another corner. Yeah, I don't know whether he should have just lobbed it back into the goal mouth. I was, didn't think he was ever going to score from that angle with so many bodies in front of him. But he's got his corner. Palma to take again on this near side. Rifles it into the near post area where it's headed over the bar and behind for a third in quick succession for Celtic. Yeah, Hemming's having a real problem with what it's Greg Taylor, one of the smallest guys on the pitch, but he's he's in there to can almost block him off and he's he's doing a job on him. Yeah, and Taylor goes to ground and the Referee trying to sort it's things out there. That's a very congested six-yard box because Palma's put in the corner in there every single time. I was just going to ask that to Taki. Simon, they've got ten, uh, ten players in their own six-yard box. I wonder, as a goalkeeper, is that just too crowded? Would you rather some of the well, Simon players were out a bit? Well, they're, man, they're, they're marking man for man, and then they've got zonal players in there also, and they've been given jobs to do, so that's what attracted them into the six-yard box. This time it's a deeper corner. O'Reilly meets it, heads it back towards the six, headed away by Gogic. 
bouncing around the midway point now of the second and half. Ralston heads it out to Palma to try and keep this attack alive. Palma flicks it over the head of Bakus. Now he's found Greg Taylor. It's good play. Kyogo takes a touch in the box and oh. saved by Hemming. He took it to the left-hand side of the six-yard area. Tighter angle and the goalkeeper made himself big and makes the save. That's behind for yet another Celtic corner. I thought he was going to just side-footed Stephen into the back of the net. Then he's taken a brilliant touch, actually. And he waited for the goalkeeper to go down, but he didn't go down on this occasion. And he tried to lift it over him and he got the goalkeeper got a block on it. Palma with it. And headed off the line by Richard Taylor. And then last for goal from distance and saved by Hemming. It was Hattati who caught it. Outside the box, he's having a look up at the heavens. Yeah, I think initially, wasn't it, for the for the first corner, he was blocked off again. I just think in that situation, when somebody's in among you, just you've got to stay nice and calm and cool and walk him into the near post area so that you can then just check off him at the right moment and find a bit of space for yourself. But if you start almost fighting with him, you lose your concentration and you lose your ability to go and attack the ball. Remains 2-2 two, two here, and it's all square in Edinburgh now as well because Ross McCausland has scored for Rangers. So Hearts 1, Rangers 1. Shankland have given Hearts a half-time lead, but McCausland has brought the Premiership runners up level. 1-1 in Dundee between they and Kilmarnock. 2-2 and here, so all square across the board in the final top six matches of the season. And bottom six wraps up tomorrow what a huge afternoon it is for St Johnston and Ross County Bomono gets there ahead of Palma here at Celtic Park and knocks it out for a Celtic throw in Greg Taylor takes for McGregor McMenamin comes to meet him and he's brought down by Callum McGregor says the referee who's Matt McDermott and that will be a free kick to St Mirren over on this near side two apiece here and what Stephen Robinson said to his players, he would probably anticipate, Stephen, that there will be a, a little bit of an onslaught at times in the second half coming their way. Yeah, well, I don't think it'll have changed too much from his pre-match chat in terms of what to expect from Celtic. I think he's a bit frustrated with the balls up to, to Olisania. I think they're really trying to work the channels in behind the Celtic set of halves and they're just not putting enough on it and Celtic are able to recycle attacks. But just, just probably to get that more out of more use out of Olasanya. Mandarin obviously offers something different, but give Olasanya something to work with. Long free kick to the edge of the box, headed away by Welsh. Bouncing around the midfield, McMenamin gets there and toes it out to Bomono on this near side. Challenged by Palma. And it's going to be a Celtic throw in. Bomono's got his arms outstretched, thinking it should have gone his way. And then Bakus brings down Hatate. It'll be a free kick to Celtic, which they've taken quickly back to Welsh. He rolls it out to Ralston on that far side. Square ball for McGregor, just inside. The similar in half to Ralston, and then out to the right-hand side for Nicholas Kuhn. It's the overlap from Ralston, but he's cutting in field instead. Side through ball for Hitate. Back to Kuhn, and then out to Greg Taylor, who finds Palma. Level with the Samaritan penalty spot, taking on Pomono, shifts on to his right side, crosses in, headed away by Richard Taylor. Ralston gets it under control on the far side. Short infield to McGregor, rolls it to Kyogo at the edge of the box, back to Greg Taylor. Now with McGregor, left-footed low ball out to the touchline, and it's O'Reilly trying to slice open the Samaritan defence, but Gogic gets in the way and gets it clear. Hard work here in the heat for the Samaritan players right now. Two apiece it remains, but here's Kuhn to Ralston. It crosses in off Gogic and Celtic have yet another corner, this time over on the far side. Yeah, just looking at, at Kyogo at times, he's he's always looking to make that little run in, in behind, but the ball never comes at times, you know, and, and, it, and it's on, you know, just a, a dink it either over the top or down the side of, of the player that's marking him in behind. Comes the corner, Kyogo tries to leap onto it, but it beats everyone and sails behind for a goal kick on the reverse side. You do wonder if Stephen Robinson will think about maybe going to the bench. Mikhail Mandrin, that last one, Celtic win the corner. The ball comes up to Olasania, he doesn't do well enough to get a hold of it. That's Mandrin's game, they've got different strengths. The game is looking more suited to the presence and the hold up of Mikhail Mandrin. Benches today, Celtic, Bain, Johnston, Scales, Ida, Carter, Vickers, Iwata, Bernardo, Maida and Forrest. 
Rominski, Bolton, Flynn, Mandron, Scott, Dunn, Brown, Strain, Jameson amongst the bench for the visitors. And played 55 and a half, two apiece. It's up and there for Marcus Fraser. Got a couple of appearances in the Celtic senior side. So a youngster, including a European match, Europa League against Wren, French team. It'll be a free kick to Celtic. Meantime, Kyogo's been upended right of the centre circle. You know, he's had shoulder problems in the past, Kyogo. Yeah, he's just got a bang on his back. I think he's gone He's gone for it. And it's one of them where he's he's just been hit when he's up, and, up in the air. And uh, he's come down. He'll be, he'll be all right. Alex Gogic's elbows are like metal, honestly. I've been <laughs> on the end of some of the... Um, the that's, it's a type of contact from the hips. Yeah, I've seen some Hibs supporters lamenting the fact that he's not turning it on in their green and white colours rather than St Mirren. Of course, he was deployed in midfield primarily at Easter Road, wasn't he, Stephen? Yeah, and, and we had we had a good balance in there. Um, obviously, Joe Newell was a terrific football player. Alex Gogic added something different. Jackson Irvin, these box-to-box runs. There was a good balance in there. And when you lose, I felt in the last few years, they've lost that bit of steel in there. Joe Newell's obviously still in there. Um, but it's almost been football players, and, and there's, there's a very, they're all very similar. I thought Alex Gogic and especially Jackson Irvin both uh, were terrific hips players. Looked like he was away last year. He's just signed a contract extension, though, the Cyprus International. Long ball down this near side for St. Mirren, who are in the Celtic half. First real opportunity, I think, since the, the break, and it's McMenamin down the right-hand side. Level the Celtic penalty spot, shifts it in field to Boyd Munts. Rolls it back to Bomono, controls with the undersole, rolls it forward to McMenamin, and then to Fakus, and then Bomono right-hand side of the box. That might have come off Matt O'Reilly's hand there as it bounces out for a throw-in on this near side. O'Reilly thrust his hands behind his back so quickly after it happened. Yeah, it did come off his hand, whether it's out, his hand is out. Uh, but that was good play there, really good play from, from Samir. No, it's not a penalty, but lovely little give-and-go uh, combination of passes to get into that position in the first place from Bamona. Mark O'Hara would have loved that because he would have taken it. There hasn't been an opposition domestic player scored a hat-trick here since Eric Blatt did for Aberdeen in the 80s. Pakus takes a long throw. Celtic struggling to get it away here. It's Olesanya on the turn and he shoots just wide of the right-hand post. And it stays Celtic 2. St Mirren 2 on 58. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, Navarovsky, he's got to do better there. You know, it's a loopy throw on this. And not like the good one that he got from the... Uh, for, for the goal uh, and this was up in the air and you've got to be able to come and win, win the ball as a centre half in that situation and he doesn't deal with it and then it's all mayhem inside the box and by Zach Hemming into the centre circle and Celtic give it away in the midfield and it's picked up on this near side by Conor McMenamin Stephen Robinson delighted to get the chance to Bring him to the club. He was two seasons at Glen Torren in his homeland before he came to St Mirren. And working under Warren Feeney, who was a Dundee United striker. Of course, Niall McGinn was a teammate of his last term. And as Callum McGregor picks up for Celtic and shifts it to the left of the centre circle, Greg Taylor out to this left hand side for Palma up against Elvis Bomono. Shows too much of it to him though, and the defender gets it away. Navrotsky to Greg Taylor, he gives it straight to Olesanya, who's then tripped by McGregor, and that will be a free kick to St Mirren on this near side, about level with the edge of the centre circle in their own half. 59 on the clock at 2 2. It appears as though Saints have weathered the early second half storm that came their way. Yeah, they have, they have, and uh, they're settled into this game, can go either way, but um, yes, it's, it's a good game from that perspective because there have been goals in the game, there have been chances on both ends, uh, and, uh, you know, it's a competitive game, even though there's nothing really at stake, uh, they've kept the tempo up really well. It has been a good game. It's headed away by Wells, long ball, O'Hara heads it in the box, Olesanyi's in left, footed, and what a challenge that is from Navrotsky! Probable goal saving because Olesanya had pulled the trigger and his efforts blocked there by the Polish defender. So important he made that block. It's really, a simmering corner. Really clever header from Makahara. And you think that Olesanya is just about to put some on back in front. But yeah, as you say, amazing last-ditch tackle from Navroki. But 
really, a really clever for, header from Mark O'Hara. Yeah, but but they still he can't deal with the long ball again, can they? You know, and that's 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 uh, just that ball played in on top of them. Nobody's strong enough to come and head the ball. Corner Simmer and Bakus in, but it's beaten away or headed away by the first man, McGregor. And Bakus gets back onto it over on that far side. Looks up, but it's a delicate ball in, but it's evaded everybody. And Joe Hart sees it behind for the goal kick. Just beyond the hour mark, Celtic two, Simmer and two. Olisani's had a couple of chances in the last few minutes. He's always a threat. At times, as I say, his hold up play could be better. His general win on the ball play could be better but he's such a threat he's so quick he's so strong and this year he's gone up a level he's, he's added goals to his game and a real problem for any centre half Celtic have it up the other end here Palma passes it back the way though into the centre circle from the left hand side to the right of it for Welsh side football looking for Hitate he's cut out it's Callum McGregor one back low by Boyd Munts just kind of Goes about his business quietly, Keelan Boyd Munts in the centre midfield and Olisani is onto it in the left and he's wriggled himself away from Wells driving down the left-hand side. Ralston trying to bite back, down goes the Simmerin striker in the box. He's Steve. looking at the referee optimistically for a penalty and he was behind for the goal kick. Yeah, I think Stephen Welch is in trouble also. I think his, his shoulders may be popped. And uh, just obviously Olisani just holding him off and holding him off for whatever's happened. Uh, he's he's struggling, and that, I think that's some injuries he's had a few times, hasn't he? That's a, that's a ball though from the man point of view. Um, Stephen Welsh just can't handle Alessandro's pace and power. He really struggled with him all afternoon, and I think that's why he's been frustrated at times. He's saying, "Keep hitting me, keep it. I'll isolate myself against Stephen Welsh," and and he, and he was in. He, Anthony Nelson has an amazing recovery run. I think they had a wee check at a penalty, but brilliant covering defending from Anthony Ralston, but that is the ball for St Mum. So 2-2 here, Simmer and twice in front in the first half, Celtic twice pegging them back in the first half. And that's how the scoreline remains after 62 and a half at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Rangers 1, McCausland cancelling out the Shankland opener. And at Dens, Dundee 1, Kilmarnock 1, Mackay Stephen of the visitors in front, Luke McCowan with the equaliser. Three o'clock, Stranraer against East Kilbride in the Pyramid playoff final second leg, 2-2. Two -two. After the first leg at the K Park, that it's Stair Park this afternoon. Finally poised. Will Stranraer drop into the Lowland League? And can they save their skins? We'll keep you up to date with that one in the latter part of Sports Sound. We're on till five. And at 5.30 on BBC Alipa, you can watch Hamilton Ake's try and protect a 2-1 lead when they go to Cali Thistle in the Championship playoff final second leg. 1-2-1 at Douglas Park the other night. And they've got something to hold on to. Then tomorrow, as Stephen Welsh continues to receive treatment, Livingston Hibbs, bit of a dead rubber there already, relegated Livy. Hibbs will be hoping an Aberdeen drop points and they could potentially finish top at the bottom half. A bit of extra cash that comes their way with that. But in the main, and our two commentary matches tomorrow afternoon are Motherwell against St Johnston and Ross County against Aberdeen, who will be facing Wraith Rovers in the Premiership playoff final over the two legs on Thursday and Sunday. Changes coming up, Jane Lewis. Yeah, three changes uh, for Celtic. You can see Stephen Welsh is really uh, struggling, uh, can't you, there? Um, he's gone down on his shoulder, not quite sure what happened, but you can see he's got it wrapped in his shirt as a kind of makeshift sling, if you like. He's coming off. Uh, Liam Scales is coming on for him. Adam Ida is also coming on. So too is Iwata. Uh, Stephen Welsh coming off, as I say, Hatati and Kyogo, the other players to come off for Celtic as well. So three changes. Yeah, I can't, I, can't, listen, I can't believe that, he, that they haven't carried him off. That, 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 that's really a very, very sore thing. If your shoulder's gone out, uh, I know my son had happened him three times and he was in absolute agony with it. And uh, that's a sore injury. Maybe it hasn't gone out fully, but he's certainly injured. He's walking a bit better now, but he's in a lot of pain. Okay, we'll go back to Jane for news of Simmerin changes. I'll just do it. Simmer and double change. Ryan Strain, Charles Dunn are coming on. And I think Richard Taylor is going to come off. He's made a couple of goal line clearances today, Taylor. And 
minute. He's going to be replaced by Dunn and Strain is going to come on for Bomono. Stephen McGinn. Yeah, like for light changes, two guys that fit into the system. Um, Dunn left, left with a three and Ryan Strain will take up his usual position of right wing back. Probably in your best team, Ryan Strain's plays. Ryan Strain at his best is uh, a fantastic player for St Mon, so no big changes for St Mon. How big a miss will he and Bakus be when they, it looks like they're off? How big a miss will they both be? Huge, very, very hard to replace. I think Elvis is a great afternoon here against Lewis Palma, but their influence on and off the park has been huge at St Mon. And it just shows you that that, that that market can be used for Scottish clubs, and St Mon have used it very well. Yeah, ideally you get them on maybe three-year contracts and you get one, maybe two good years out of them and sell them for profit. It's not going to work out. I think the only, the only disappointing thing... Joe Hart tried to prevent a corner that he's just about managed it. And Scales have put it out for a throw of man. It's going to be given as a foul. Sorry, Stephen, off you go. No, just the Bacchus one, having such a good World Cup with Australia, obviously famously playing against Argentina. Um, you would like to have got a bit of money for him, but... In terms of the, the the business originally done, what he's how well he's played for St. Martin, big in, big personality off the pitch, he's he's been a great singer. I think Bolton Wanderers were the, the only team that really came in with a formal bid for him, it was certainly made public during his time under contract, but and give credit to the St. Martin board, maybe they thought, well, he's integral to deliver European football. Well, to absolutely. St. and they take that yeah. gamble and, and yeah. he's been rewarded. Here's Navrotsky. For Celtic, Scales back to Mike Navrotsky, right of the centre circle, still 2-2 then, heading towards the final quarter of this one. Kuhn slipping it forward, right-hand side of the box for O'Reilly, but Boyd Munts is there. St Mirren can clear, and we can go to Dens Park for an update from Willie Miller. Not a great deal happening here, though, uh, Liam, unfortunately. It's been a bit livelier in the second half, uh, mostly Kilmarnock, the visitors uh, on the ascendancy. A couple of little opportunities for him. Greg Stewart has come on and uh, he's been very influential driving forward he had a, a low strike that was well saved and then Fraser Murray again who's been pretty prominent in this game here's a curler and it's deflected and it comes off the Dundee bar as for Dundee oh another one off the bar it was Murray again with uh, a set piece left hand side at an angle he's curled it over the top of the wall he's very unlucky to see that one come off the top of the bar, it goes out for a corner so it's definitely the visitors on the ascendancy here, but still 1-1 As it is at Tynecastle between Hearts and Rangers, it's two apiece here, Celtic on the attack, O'Reilly low ball into the box, is cut out and dumped away by Scott Tanzer, picked up by Scales, left of the centre circle, rolls it out to Taylor on this near side controlled by Palman, rolled back to Greg Taylor, who finds Scales side foot back to Hart all four goals here came in the first half. And as Iwata collects and strokes it to his right for Navrotsky, and then out onto the touchline for Nicholas Kuhn, taking on his man. He blazes away from Tanzer down the right hand side level with the six crosses in, but it's too close to the gloves of Zach Hemming, who holds on. And it stays Celtic 2, Simmer in 2, almost on 69. He did everything right initially. <laughs> Got into beat his uh, player, knocked it to the byline, and then just throws in a lazy cross into the box for the goalkeeper to just come and get his two hands on it quite easily. Uh, and, uh, and when he had players that he could have picked out, that final product is the thing. And it is Simmer on the ball here with... Ryan Strain moves it into his compatriot Bacchus, then back to Boyd Munts onto the halfway line for Strain as Rangers go ahead against Hearts at Tynecastle. They've had their number in recent seasons, trailed to Shanklin's goal, cancelled out by McCausland, and Todd Cantwell has just put Rangers 2-1 up at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Rangers 2. 1-1 one, one between Dundee and Kilmarnock at Dens and two apiece here. And it's Celtic on the ball on the right with Ralston up the line for Nicholas Kuhn. Moving in field, his little ball in to the central area is cut out and away by Charles Dunn. Iwata over there. He's got two submitting players around about him. O'Hara's one of them. It's passed up the line to O'Reilly. Almost managed to get it through to Ida. And bounces off Gogic and falls for strain. He goes back to Dunn. He dinks it up towards the halfway line. And it's going to go out for a throw-in on the far side for Celtic, which Ralston takes quickly. 
back to Navrotsky and now with Iwata who enjoyed his spell in the starting 11 during Callum McGregor's injury and there's the skipper on the ball here getting it from Palma and he rolls it low back into his own half for scales right footed shifts it to Navrotsky he's crossing the halfway line at walking pace short simple ball to Ralston to his right he finds Kuhn on the touch line and into Ralston to Navrotsky and now with Liam Scales forward to Iwata right footed ball out to Palma this is better from Celtic it's good build up play Palma shuffling onto his right side he forced away from goal by strain though infield to Iwata and now it's with Ralston spinning away from O'Hara who got both simmering goals in the first half here is Scales out to Greg Taylor on this near side infield to Palma trying to pick their way through flicks it into the box cross with the outside of the boot and it's headed away by Gogic and he's looking for Ida now it's with Bakus for St Mirren long ball Alessania will give chase in behind Scales he's on his own at the moment chops back onto his left side but looking desperately for support it's not in a good enough position he has to turn again and he shoots well wide and he's getting a bit of abuse from Conor McMenamin who claims he should have passed it back to him O'Hara arrived too late to be considered an option and it all falls flat for St Mirren on that occasion almost in 72 at 2-2 no wonder he's frustrated Conor McMenamin he's worked so hard to try and stop Cal McGregor getting the ball he's not had a lot of the ball himself he's constantly made those runs into the box and all of a sudden he's shot from an impossible angle when he might not have got it McMenamin but at least if he tried it's almost like he gave up the ghost there Olesanya wasn't it so I can't it was pass a tired shot it, yeah. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised we'll see Mandarin pretty shortly 18 to play of the 90 Simiran still holding Celtic here on trophy day here's Scales low ball forward to Ida turning away from Gogic rolling it out wide left of the box for Palma to the underlapping Taylor low ball across Gogic slips but it's away by Boyd Munz and as far as Ralston who shoots wide well wide in the end from the right angle of the penalty area would have been some goal had that gone in it will stay though Celtic 2 St Mirren 2 72 and a half on the clock yeah Sally when he get the ball the, the move it so well passing 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 one two touch passing and then it goes to the wide guys and I haven't seen Kuhn or Palmer really get going attack the full back one time Kuhn down right hand side there was a lazy cross I haven't seen anything from Palmer in the second half everything comes to him it's back inside it keeps the ball he can do that all day you're not worried if you're dies in my there James Forrest to be a cup final jersey at the minute from, from what they've offered here Nicholas Kuhn especially takes the ball quite nicely at times but absolutely no end product well, Stephen hinted about it just a moment ago. Mikhail Mandron is going to be on shortly for St Mirren. He does some good work, bustling back into his own half. And eventually he's nicked off by Alessania, though. And O'Hara out to the far side. And then there's a foul on Tanzar in front of the north stand over there. And it will be a free kick to St Mirren about midway inside Celtic territory. Alessania's doing it. He's a tough boy, though, isn't he? He... <laughs> He handles himself very, very well. He's not the biggest, but he's uh, he, he's uh, strong and he's quick. Uh, he's obviously taken a, a little knock in that clash with Adam Eder there. Yeah, he's, he's had quite the the career, Olesanya. He was playing loads of non-league football for non-league clubs, and then Middlesbrough picked him up. He made a few sub-appearances in the Championship down south for them. Picked up by St Mirren last season. He's managed seven goals this term, but a lot of it is about his movement and his work rate up there. And sometimes, in, 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 uh, yeah, and in games like this, this is uh, perhaps you know the big pitch up against Celtic. This is where you can utilise him. Yeah, he's 26 now. He's not a kid. Um, as you say, he's had lots of clubs and you feel as if he's always played his own way but he's gone in with Stephen Robinson he's been properly coached he's led the line at times sometimes he plays as one of the deeper number 10s and I think he's brought brought him to another level and another really good performance from him today on comes Mandron Lasagna oh. a chance to sit down and get some breath after that performance from him covering lots of that pitch he kicks him in over on the left and it comes towards the penalty spot it's headed half away by Celtic Palma tries to knock it away picked up on the far side here by McMenamin to take the free kick it's not a bad ball either just a little bit 
too high for Marcus Fraser. He was about eight yards from goal, and it sails behind for the goal kick on this reverse side. And it remains two each with 15 of the 90 to play. Oh, no, you're right. It was a really good ball in. Uh, got a little bit of pace on it, bending away from the goalkeeper, uh, and just a little bit too high for Marcus Fraser. But there's there's still a chance here for St. Mirren in this game to get get that third goal and won it. But Celtic probably most of the play in the second half but there's always that chance it's been a brilliant season for St Mirren, 13 wins they, Stephen Robinson actually, when they won 12 last season, that was their most in a top flight since 86-87, when they managed 12 before going on to lift the Scottish Cup there's been improvement improvement in number of wins, improvement in league position, European football as Gogic challenges Ida he's done well <laughs> unorthodox, he went in there and was used the, just the the top of his back to get that clear out for uh, Simmer and Ball in the end of a Celtic player on this near side they're throwing as Celtic look to their bench and Paolo Bernardo is going to replace the captain for Callum McGregor will get a break here and he'll be hoping to be lifting the Scottish Cup next week he'll get his hands on the league trophy pretty soon anyway and he gets a standing ovation from the Celtic supporters. He had that little spell out injured this season. It must have felt like an eternity for him. He's played some amount of football since breaking into the Celtic team under Ronnie Dyla in 2014. He's almost exactly a decade in the Celtic first team pack. And he's, apart from a, a brief spell under Dyla where he dropped out of the starting 11 he's pretty much been the first name in the team sheet he was alongside Scott Brown for, for so many years yeah and I'll tell you what Brendan Rodgers takes a lot of credit for actually putting him into that position that deeper position and, and, and creating uh, a, a, almost a playmaker out of him because let's think about that he started off as almost a right winger and a, and a um, and then he went out and loan, uh, learned probably the game a little bit more. But uh, when, when he, I think when he went into that sort of holding midfield position, that's when you've seen, you seen the, the real influence of him and the, and the best of his qualities. But it's a lesson to every footballer as well. You say about the right wing. At times, Brendan Rodgers asked him to fill in at left back when he wasn't always a midfield regular. And he did his job, he did it to the best of his ability, and he earned the manager's trust, and he becomes... The, the captain, a real icon here. Yeah, I remember a, a colleague down south who is a Notts County fan was waxing lyrical about him when he was on loan there in season 13 14. He said, This guy's going to be a star for Celtic, and boy, was he right. How many trophies? Changes. Sorry, how many trophies he had? Well, by winning the league the other night, that takes him up to 21. Wow. Wow, I hope he's got a big <laughs> save somewhere. James Forrest, of course, there's a couple more than him. Some are going to make a couple of changes in a moment, maybe get news from Jane about those as that goes out to play for a throwing down on this near side yep. for Saints, Jane. Yeah, they're making a couple of changes. McMenamin and Boyd Munns are the players coming off, and Flynn and Jameson are the players coming on. Just a word on Olyasanya, who's come off there. He's uh, just uh, wrapped his left elbow in a, a kind of a bag of ice, if you like, so he's obviously struggling a little bit there. But yeah, those two changes are for St. Mirren on now Flynn and Jameson for McMenamin and Boyd Munns. Stephen, a nice moment for Ryan Flynn this. Yeah, 150th game for St. Mung. Um, he joined St. Mung now as an ex team in the minute, Sheffield United, and he's been a really good servant for St. Mung. And potentially his 150th appearance in his last game for St. Mung. So amazing that he gets the run out here and the reception at the end that he deserves from the St. Mung fan. St. Mung are on the attack here. They've got a throw in which Bakus is going to launch into the Celtic box level with the Celtic penalty spot heading towards the final 10 as Lewis Jameson comes on as well for Boyd Munts this is an opportunity Celtic haven't looked comfortable with these there's almost a stick of twist feeling to it the game not often you get that here as a man manager 2-2 two -two at Celtic Park and it's winnable Bacchus bowls it in it breaks around about the 6 yard area where Navrotsky gets on to and gets it clear out just outside the box and then he gets a second chance to head clear, just in the 18. And it's now with Gogic for St Mirren as Fabio Silva puts Rangers 3-1 up at Tynecastle. Here comes St Mirren, long cross on the box, headed away by Scales. A little push by Flynn. And Celtic would have had a free kick, but they're on the ball anyway, so 
Referee McDermott allows them to continue. It's played up towards Edab Gogic that gets there first and shifts it back to his goalkeeper. The final 10 minutes of the game here, at least of the 90, 2 2. 3 1 Rangers then at Tynecastle and 1 1 between Dundee and Kilmarnock. And there's Ryan Strain on this near side. Back to Fraser from the halfway line, forward and cleared by Scales out for a throw in. Which again, Bakus is going to be able to take right in front of the Saints fans who are having a wonderful season. Yeah, these long throws have caused a few problems. Obviously, Scales is on the pitch, Adam Eder's on the pitch, he should be able to deal with it. But Mandron's in there too, who's a tall guy, and he will be the target. Bakus will take. Pulls it into the near post area. Again, it's uncomfortable. Chance here, which is shot by Charles Dunn off a Celtic player. And behind for us in Mirren corner. That looked like a good opportunity there for the visitors to potentially go ahead for a third time. It's a, it's a half chance, but it falls to Charles Dunn. I think it's Matt O'Reilly. He could maybe deal with the first ball. He, he leaves it. And that's what some are looking for, not dealing with the first ball. And, the, and it breaks to Charles Dunn. And maybe a right-footed player gets a shot away at Golda. Ryan Strain over the corner, right in front again of the Simmerin fans. Dexter Lembekis has pulled one back for Hearts. 3 2 now at Tynecastle. 2 2 here. St Mirren looking to make it 3 2 here. Out swinger from Strain, and it comes. It's just evaded Mandron. He's annoyed with himself that he's not got something on that because the goal was gaping for him. Flynn turns it back to his keeper at the edge of his own box up the other end long ball from Hemming Line Strain's going to give chase is he on or off here here's Strain it's an early ball in oh what a chance it was it's a tame effort from Jameson right at Joe Hart there was no flag I don't think saving Celtic or was there it doesn't look I, like I, it. No, I don't think, do it. No, I don't think he was offside. And I, that was a great chance for Jim. It was a good ball. And he's just he's kind of slightly behind him, but he just couldn't get his body uh, shaped so he could almost fall away and hit it on the volley. He tried to stay up and it just, just kind of almost knocked it into Joe Hart's hands. Uh, but uh, that was a big, big chance. Sally getting caught down this sort of left, in their left back position. Um, and uh, a good ball in, Stephen. Yeah, really good. I think Ryan Strain, he looked offside in the move, but you felt for the, the, for the build-up that he was going to put it exactly on the spot he did for uh, Lewis Jameson. And young kid, really good finisher out of the academy, and you don't know if the occasion's maybe got to him because it's it's one that in training you, you just stick away either foot. He's, he's such a good finisher. So, But I think the offside flag might have spared his blushes anyway. Do you think it's offside? It looked offside from the initial ball. I think Strain went a bit early. The really high line from Celtic under no pressure. Tony Rolston's just been receiving treatment. That's all Steve Clark needs is another injured right back. Oh, Aaron Hickey. Off. It wasn't offside because no. it's a drop ball, so. It will be a Celtic ball. It looks like Aaron Hickey out of the European Championship as well as Nathan Patterson's right back is a monumental problem for Steve Clark. Coming against that powerful German side in just uh, under four weeks time and come Celtic down the left hand side side of play for a throw in Bernardo battling with Stephen Robinson to get the ball down below us six minutes of the 90 to play yes and Mern 2-2 two, two. looking trying trying to get this one under press and Celtic high uh, and uh, they've had their big chances in this game obviously that last one could, for Jameson and of course Al Alessandra when he was on the block from Navarovsky. So elsewhere in the Premiership, Hearts 2, Rangers 3, Dundee 1, Kilmarnock 1, 3 o'clock kickoff, Stranraer, East Kilbride at Stair Park 2-2 two, two, after the first leg of the Pyramid Playoff final. Second leg to come today, 5.30, Cali Thistle, Hamilton Ackies. Ackies with a 2-1 lead going into the second leg of that Championship Playoff final. And Simmering come down the right-hand side here with Ryan Strain, but it's only back heel it. And it's uh, given away. And played back into their own box by Celtic. Hart out to Ralston on the far side. And side takes it forward to Bernardo driving forward. He's got 
chance to play Kuhn in on the right. It's Nicholas Kuhn. Ida's waiting in the middle. So too's Palma. So too's Bernardo. Kuhn, little back heel for Bernardo. Shifts onto his left side. Turns it back outside the box for O'Reilly. O'Reilly level with the penalty spot now. He with the back heel. Ralston with the ball. I thought Kuhn probably could get a ball into the box. He delayed, delayed, give it to Bernardo. He delayed with little back, back healers in it, involved in it, uh, rollbacks, and uh, eventually a really good ball to the back post uh, for Palma, who reacted and uh, got in to tap it home. And just when Stephen Robinson thought he was going to get a point to seal a magnificent season for them, up pops Luis Palma, and that's what Celtic do, Stephen. It looked as though they'd actually taken their foot off the gas, and St Mirren were the more likely to, to go on and find a third goal. Yeah, and I think the water bottle took the brunt of his frustration. Let's go to Jane Lewis. Nice moment for Joe Hart, this. Absolutely, yeah. Celtic making a change in goal. Joe Hart is coming off, and just listen to that reception that he is getting. A farewell from Joe Hart. I just look at all the embraces of all the players on the touchlines to make a rare appearance but yeah Joe Hart taking his time he's getting the applause from the fans as you would imagine and he's getting all the cuddles and hugs and high fives from his teammates as well I imagine there could be a wee tear in the eye I'll have a little look lame as he comes past me but that's a lovely moment for Joe Hart coming off uh, that shows you how popular he is among his own players also obviously the fans have responded to him and he's He's been a very good servant He's come up here and, and, and also because he's come to the end of his almost his playing career, apart of, of course, he'll play next week in the final, but his last almost league appearance, uh, he's, I think he's decided that he's going to, going to retire from that perspective and I hope he goes into coaching, I hope he goes into some sort of position where he can lend all that experience uh, to younger players uh, coming coming up and uh, and uh, but he's been very very good for Celtic. He's been successful. He's won his championship. He's spread out the big big saves when it matters at time, and that's the key. That is the key of any Celtic goalkeeper when you're playing. That you may not be called upon to do, make 20 saves, but when the big saves come along, that's what you've got to do. Uh, and uh, and uh, he came up from England also, I think. And you know, people were questioning him down there. You know, he was a Man City. Pep got rid of him. He lacked a little bit of confidence, uh, and because his, his, he was questioned, he was England goalkeeper. But I remember the game. I don't know, Stephen, if you remember when he when he played against Barcelona and a and a two-legged affair for Man against for Man City against Barcelona. He must have had about 15 one-on-ones. It was it quite incredible over the piece, uh, and and it was sensational performance from from shot stopping. Yeah, from one Celtic goalkeeper to another. The words of Packy Bonner on Joe Hart, his final league match as a professional footballer. He's won all three titles since arriving here under Ange Postecoglou. Looked like his career was petering out right down the run order. And a couple of clubs, Spurs. A little update from Willie Miller, perhaps, at Dens Park. Yeah, Liam, uh, come on up down to 10 men. Robbie Dees has gotten himself uh, sent off a second yellow card. The referee didn't uh, brandish a yellow card initially, uh, and then he was told to have a rethink, and uh, after uh, a wait of about a minute or so, um, he, he decided that it deserved a yellow card, second yellow card, so come on up down to 10 men. Thanks, Willie. We're in the 90th minute here. There'll be a good few added on. There's been injuries and substitutions and Celtic 3, Simmer in 2 and he's back with Scott Bain as Jane was saying, a rare appearance Joe Hart's been the dominant force over the last three years no ball down the right hand side no stoppage time 
time in the end. Matt McDermott decides to end the season after the 90 minutes here. I'm not sure Shemirin will be too happy with that, but anyway, they've had a wonderful season. It looked like they were going to get a point on the final day here in Glasgow. But they've been suckered right at the end by Luis Palma. Fabulous ball, and it was from the right from Kuhn. And Palma popped it home, and they had to come from behind twice. Did Celtic today. Samirin through O'Hara twice led the second from the penalty spot. O'Reilly and Kyogo cancelled them out. Really entertaining game. Samirin more than played their part. They've got European football to look forward to for the first time in 37 years. What a moment that's going to be for a couple of generations of Samirin supporters who've not been able to see the like. Well, they're going to be seeing it in a couple of months' time. They will enter the Conference League second qualifying round and with a probable winnable tie to start with. Though we say that carefully given what happened to Kilmarnock and Motherwell against Welsh and Irish opponents. So it's Celtic who win here. They're just getting the stage ready for the trophy presentation. Let's quickly go back to Willie Miller. Late drama at Dens Park. Yeah, there's a penalty for the home side. Um, it was uh, Costello that was brought down by Donnelly just inside the box. Listen, there's still a little bit of confusion down there. There's players round the referees waiting, obviously, for it to be checked. But as it stands, Aidan Deer get a chance late in this game to take the full three points with a rather controversial penalty. It's been given, yes. It's been given. Um, Costello brought down and... Uh, Dundee have been given the opportunity with uh, Luke McCowan at this moment in time to make it 2-1 late in the game. And the Celtic players just making their way off the pitch. They'll go and presumably put on one of their T-shirts that they've had printed for the occasion. The Samirin players, before all that starts, are over in front of their fans, taking the acclaim. Unlucky to lose late on today but it doesn't detract from what's been a magnificent season for them. Highest league finish since 84-85, most league wins since then as well. It's been a fabulous campaign, and they can, I was waiting to say, dust the passports off, but they'll be hoping to avoid the likes of Welsh and Irish opponents if that's the case. Well, that is the only request, um, not to be greedy once you're in, but the Simon fans have they've deserved, they've, they've suffered at times over the last five, six years, but the chance to go on a European journey is so exciting. I know how excited everyone is in Paisley. Today didn't really matter, matter in the great grand scheme of things, but I did say it was a stick or twist situation. It felt winnable for St Martin when Celtic had one eye in the cup final taking players off, but you get too comfortable here, then you can be hurt. The two substitutes switch off. Lewis Jameson not tracking his runner and Ryan Strange just switching off to the back post. But another amazing season, and as a claw bonding off the park, another year of progression. Stephen Robinson is their 18th manager since Alex Smith led them to the Scottish Cup. That penalty missed at Dens Park, incidentally. That looks like it's going to finish in a 1 1 draw. We'll get back to Willie if there's more drama to be had there. But they're on to a good thing or similar in with Stephen Robinson as the Saints players make their way off the pitch. And they will now regroup. And there'll be new signings. Some will leave, some will arrive, but an exciting campaign to come for the Paisley Saints. No need for the League Cup groups for them next season. It is Europe. But it is the Celtic supporters who are celebrating again today. A crowd of 60,000 in here, in the sunshine. And having watched their team win late in the day, they've had so many late goals kind of woven into the fabric of this club as Hearts equalise against Rangers at 3-3 at Tynecastle right at the end of that game Rangers tossing away a two-goal lead and it will be more drop points for them it's been a spring of discontent for Philippe Clément over the last six, seven weeks as they were eventually left in Celtic's shadow yet again but it's Hearts 3, Rangers 3 at Tynecastle. Just waiting on the final whistles there and at Dens. And 
as I said throughout the commentary, two big playoff final second legs to come. 5.30 live on BBC Alipa, Cali Thistle against Hamilton. 2-1 to Ackies going into that second leg in the Highlands. Before that, it's Stranraer East Kilbride in the second leg of the Pyramid playoff. Two apiece after the match at Cape Park last weekend. And Stair Park is the venue for what Stranraer build as their biggest ever game. Yusuke Takawa scored that Hearts goal to make it three apiece, so the closing stage of that match over on BBC Radio Scotland, extra medium wave and digital. The stage is set quite literally over there, the plinths there as well, the winner's medals, there's a table there for the Premiership trophy as well. And whilst they've got of a use to this Packy Bonner these Celtic supporters I don't suppose it ever gets boring no it doesn't get boring and uh, you know th- th- this year uh, we described it I think during our, our commentary plus our discussions that it's been a tough year for them difficult year for them um, and, uh, and that, but when it all comes together at the end that's when you really enjoy it and you should enjoy it because uh, you are champions you're looking forward with the next year the Champions League games European at up and up and we, we've discussed that in detail also what they have to do to, to be competitive but today is all about enjoying one in the championship once again 12 out of 13 championships is quite incredible quite incredible um, to, to think that that you know at one time it was nine in a row <laughs> you know now 12 out of 13 has just gone to a different almost gone to a different level the standards here for a couple of generations of Celtic supporter must be so high because obviously you guys had a lot, you know, a lot of success you know, Aberdeen Dundee United in the 80s were you know, yeah, just incredible times for them. Celtic were still winning things at that time. Of course. But then throughout the kind of latter part of your Celtic career, when you were having to play at Hamden and this stadium was being redeveloped, all that kind of stuff. Don't for- th- those Celtic fans must look at this and Absolutely. think, wow. Don't forget that you know we went through nine years in a row not winning. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and and that was in just at the end of my time, going into the 90s, uh, and that 80s was was fantastic, very very competitive. I remember playing St Mern here on the last day of the season in 1982 and Rangers had to win 4-0 away to Aberdeen and they were 4-0 up at half so time. Aberdeen were 4-0 that day, Sorry, yeah. it? Yeah. No, no, it was Rangers, were 4-0 up 1982 and we, we ended up having having to, or maybe it was Aberdeen, sorry, you could be right, but yeah, we, we had a won the league and uh, we were 0-0 at half time and we ended up 1-3-0 and, and those were really good teams. I remember St Mern, they had Billy Stark, Dougie Sumner, Frank McDougall, Young McAvenny coming into names. the team, you know, yeah. Tony Fitzpatrick in the middle of the pitch, great Billy Thompson in goals, God rest him, great players, tough, tough games and we, we went out, Toby scored two, George McCluskey scored two that day, Tom McAdam, who's now 70, uh, scored scored with a header, but we won the game 3-0 and then of course we played St Mern in the last game down when Hearts sh- probably should have won the league and we, we stole it from them down in uh, Love Street and that was a sensational so those are great great memories and that but then you go through the bad times you, 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 you probably try to dismiss it from your brain but see when you get the good times you've got to take it in and enjoy it but absolutely the, the younger Celtic fans the bad times are not winning trebles yeah I know and think it's about incredible. It, was, it, was it five trebles you know they did the quadruple treble didn't they and quadruple they've, they've, they more than doubled it in the space of four seasons their, their treble count before yeah. Brendan Rodgers first campaign at the club but he's had unbridled success but unfortunately for, for players coming here they are, that's the standards that's expected you know and, and unfortunately you can't come and hope and wait and try and, uh, and it doesn't happen you're going to be judged on what the great teams and the great players and th- those seasons of victories uh, and, that, and you've got to be step up to it step up to it to welcome listeners who were tuned into the action at Tynecastle, a 3-3 draw between Hearts and Rangers ultimately 
No, a dramatic game on the final day. So hello to you, Liam McLeod, Stephen McGinn and Paddy Bonner at Celtic Park, where Celtic have beaten St Mirren late in the day, twice coming from O'Hara, goals behind O'Reilly and Kyogo. And it was 2-2 at the break. Luis Palma winning it just a couple of minutes from full time, right at the end. And the victory, I guess, just sets the tone for the party that will follow here, not just here, but... Celtic supporters make their way into Glasgow later on. I know the City Council have been warning the public that there will be a big party and there will be a big party through the Merchant City of this place in the East End and down into the City Centre. Another title to celebrate for Celtic and of course they will be hoping to make it a League and Cup double when they play Rangers in the Scottish Cup final a week today. That came live across BBC Scotland including here on Sports sound on BBC Radio Scotland so both frequencies with us we will have post-match reaction from Brendan Rodgers, we'll hear from Stephen Robinson from the other managers as well we're on air till 5 o'clock and we'll have news of that Stranraer East Kilbride Pyramid playoff second leg as well, that kicks off at 3 o'clock BBC Alapa has got live coverage of Cali Thistle Hamilton the Ackies protecting a 2-1 lead as they try and find a place in next season's championship tomorrow, Living Livingston Hibbs, Motherwell St Johnston and Ross County Aberdeen. Those two latter games are both live on Sports Sound tomorrow afternoon. Three o'clock kickoffs. It's out of St Johnston's hands. Ross County know if they beat Aberdeen, they will be playing Premiership football next season and they won't have to worry about the torture and stress of that playoff final. St Johnston have to just beat Motherwell and hope a draw isn't enough for them even if County were to lose to Aberdeen as well the Celtic players are in the tunnel just waiting to come out for the trophy presentation which they've got used to around these parts and whilst there have been difficult moments I think Brendan Rodgers admits as much he was uh, here the other night suggesting that there were plenty who were doubting his Celtic players at the start of the season I think they were still big favourites at that point though, to be fair but they won this one so they finish on 93 points that's a points tally they've only surpassed three times since the start of this period of dominance last season when they finished on 99, 16-17 which was the invincible season when they managed to get to a record 106 and 2013-14 when they got to 99 as Brendan Rodgers and Callum McGregor with Joe Hart lead the Celtic players back out onto the pitch and I'm sure the stadium PA will have a word with the manager and the captain perhaps the goalkeeper as well here Joe Hart came off to a rapturous ovation replaced by Scott Bain in the final minute of the match the Celtic manager waves up at the main stand the rest of the Celtic players in the green and white hoops peel off to the left to form the queue ahead of picking up their winners medals and we'll hear the Champions League anthem as well ringing out because Celtic will be automatically into the league stage of the new look Champions League next season eight matches, four here, four away all against different opponents and even more money than ever before for them. Joe Hart's going to be first up for interview here. Hopefully it will come across as best we can make it. We'll try and pull the microphones up as high as we can. With Joe Hart, Brendan Rodgers and Callum McGregor stand to the right and the ovation for the Celtic goalkeeper who retires after the Scottish Cup final next week. This was his final league game. I'll let others tell me if you're making this out. And I don't think you're able to hear it, which is a, which is unfortunate. Um, maybe we'll try and, as best we can, keep across what Joe Hart's saying, but clearly it's going to be an emotional day for him, Stephen McGinn. Yes. I know you're at the kind of latter point of your career as well. Yeah, and it gets to this stage, obviously. You can see he's visibly emotional. He put so much into football. 
you did it since you were four and five. It's all you ever remembered. Days like today, for Joe Hart's all he ever worked towards. You know, you see the the banner in the corner. That's what it's all about, and all the all the pressures and stresses of getting to this level. He, he had a tough time before he came to Celtic. He, he was a world-class goalkeeper, but. He was at Torino, Burnley, he didn't really find, find a home after Man City and Celtic and Joe Hart have been amazing for each other. I think as you can tell with the atmosphere. I'll tell you what, it's a brilliant way to go out though, isn't it? In front of 60,000 people all singing your praises, all creating a banner for him, giving him a stand ovation. I just wonder what would have happened to him at any of the other clubs he's left since Man City. I don't think so. Not, I'm sure that will live with him for the rest of his life and with his family also. So they've been absolutely able to, to t- take him to heart up here and he'll appreciate that, no doubt. Joe Hart joins the queue. The Celtic players beginning to get their winner's medals and heading up onto the stage. Callum McGregor is going to be interviewed as well here. They have a few words to say to the Celtic supporters. He spoke about it though, Packy, didn't he? About not having to sell Celtic. You can imagine Celtic in the market from a goalkeeper, maybe an agent, maybe a goalkeeper's picked up the phone and said, What about Celtic? What do you think? He's potentially said, Have a look at the last couple of games, have a look at what it's done for me and my career, and, and go for it if that's if you've got the ambition to be a top goalkeeper at a top club. And Callum McGregor paying tribute to Joe Hart. Over 700 senior appearances in his career. And he's got one more to go. When Celtic face Rangers in next season's final. If you're just joining us here, the other scores in the Premiership. Hearts 3, Rangers 3. A six-goal thriller to finish the season at Tynecastle. And it toed and froed that one. Shankland gave Hearts the lead, cancelled out by McCausland. On the other side of half-time, Todd Cantwell and Fabio Silva had Rangers 3-1 up with nine to play. Late strikes from Lembekisa and one in stoppage time from Tagawa. See Hearts take a point and it's been a wonderful season for them as well. They've got European football to look forward to as well. We'll have a little pop at the Europa League playoff, but guaranteed at the very least Conference League football and the money that comes with it as well. Callum McGregor will join the queue. It's some amount of staff. We're talking about this at Rugby Park the other night. I, I, they're not going to fit them all on the stage. It's physically impossible. I counted them there. Obviously, that must be everybody that's involved in, in, on the pitch before games, during games, but then off the pitch also. There was 23 staff. <laughs> the game's just gone incredibly. When I think back to our day when we <laughs> probably had four to five maximum. There's our old pal Peter Houston up there. He's getting a medal as well. Yeah, of course, it. So the Peter deserves scouting it. He department gets. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was done. D1, 10-man Kilmarnock 1 at Dens Park. Luke McCowan cancelling out the Gary Mackay. Stephen goal. Both of those came in the first half. Robbie Dees was sent off late on. Luke McCowan missed a penalty late on to win it for Dundee, who finished in the top six on their return to the top flight. Brendan Rogers being interviewed down there just now. As I say, unfortunately, we're not plugged into the the interview and to the microphones down pitch side so and we're going to have to hear from Brendan Rogers when Jane gets a chance to speak to him that'll be after the trophy lift and after the the on the pitch party when the families will be on they'll do their lap of honour and Rogers yep he's had to deal with a lot more criticism I think this time around than he did in his two and a half years last time he was here he's won his third title could have won it in 2019 of course before leaving for Leicester City but he has as I said Packy's 93 points yep. they've only surpassed that three times since 2012 and since the turn of the century they've only surpassed that I think six times so it's right up there yeah, as listen, a season you know he, he's a top manager he, he knows how to get a, a team to perform and he's managed them really really well under trying conditions this year I've got, I've got to say but there was hurt when he left the hurt remained uh, I think people even when he came back there was a lot there was quite a lot of the fans wouldn't have had it because of that but when you won things and you turn things yeah. around very quickly well, here's the big moment for Callum McGregor Neil Doncaster the SPFL chief executive just putting the winner's medal around the neck of Brendan Rodgers 
and Michael Nicholson down there as well, the Celtic chief exec, and Robert Bridge from the outgoing sponsors, Cinch, is part of that party there as well. Murdoch McLennan, the chairman of the SPFL too. And you'll have to explain this one to me, Packy. Don't know. Santa Claus has come on with the Premiership trophy. That's gone over my head. Do you know what that's about? I don't know. I have the clue. Stephen might know. There was a bit of discontent earlier in the season, I think, and Santa came out, and I don't think he got a brilliant reception. I think the Rangers fans ah, got a hold right, of that. Okay. I think, I you still believe bad. in Santa, Stephen, don't you? I need to. I have two young kids. <laughs> oh, he's getting some reception now. I think Tom was talking about this early in the programme before this game. There were murmurings of discontent at times during the season, but all of that counts for nothing now on a day like this. Callum McGregor gets his winner's medal, shaking the hands of the presentation party. Michael Nicholson there gives him a hug, and Callum McGregor, he's grown accustomed to this. He picks the trophy up off its platform and he will go and stand at the front of his teammates on the stage. They normally have a countdown for this. Ah, uh, nice touch. A nice touch from Callum McGregor. Yeah, he's letting Joe Hart help him lift the trophy. Callum McGregor's 21st major honour as a Celtic player. And he and Joe Hart will lift the Premiership trophy high above their heads. And Celtic champions 23-24. Scottish football just now and there's no sign of them relinquishing the throne anytime soon as the fireworks go off the flamethrowers go up into the Glasgow sky and the Celtic fans celebrate yet another title they are 54 all told and once the celebrations draw to an end here they will zone in with a laser-like focus on Rangers and Hampden Park and next Saturday's Scottish Cup final. They've beaten St Mirren on the final day by three goals to two and they've got their hands on the trophy yet again.